the guest that we've got today, who is Turbo BP, who's got some fantastic videos on his channel, but unfortunately, um, he's a little bit on the smaller side at the moment. I think he's very one of the most underrated channels in the space at the moment. So, for any of you guys wanting high IQ content, I'd 100% recommend checking that guy out afterwards. Um, he's, some, he's got some really good stuff over there. I've binged quite a few of his videos, and that's why I got him on as a guest today even though he is a smaller channel. So thank you for joining me on the stream, Turbo BP. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you for all of that. Um, so do you just want to jump right in? Yeah, we'll go straight into it. So the first topic that I just wanted to talk about, I was actually thinking about this today, and I think it would be a good icebreaker to kick off the stream. And it's just about how I have experienced the BP, how it's had an impact on my life. And um, I think... A lot of people kind of go through these stages. I'll see if anyone relates to this. I'll be reading the comments. I'll be trying my best to take a look at the comments to see if anyone else has been through these stages as well. But essentially, I think I've went through three stages of how I experienced the BP. So the first one is obliviousness. And I guess this doesn't really even necessarily count as a stage because... It's before you even discover the BP and you are blue-pilled on the subject and you have no idea that women care about looks and you believe in all of the delusions that your friends or parents, teachers and everything like that teaches you. And it's almost surprising of how much of a difference it makes from going from the first stage to the second stage. And that's why in the second stage... I like reached obsession and I know that there's a lot of guys out there who become who find out the BP and they reach the stages too of obsession and I think part of that reason is because it's such a striking shock to realize that you've been fed lies your entire entire life and you've been oblivious for these truths for so long and once you reach the obsession stage it, it's honestly so eye-opening that you can't help but just think about it non-stop like it's it's like you're in disbelief so much because you begin to not even trust yourself you're like how was I able to be deceived and duped for this long so you end up becoming obsessed by it and thinking about it every day like about how all different aspects of life relate to the BP and how important your looks are and I was in this stage of for of obsession for quite a long time and that's why I started making videos about this subject as well because I just thought I need to like tell the world about this I need to tell people about this I was so passionate about it because I thought that there must be a significant number of young men out there who were like me and didn't know how important looks are not just in dating obviously dating is the main thing and women care about looks more than anything that's like the main selling point of the bp but it affects your life in so many other ways beyond that and once you come across like the data and it, it, there's just no other way to deny it, uh, the things that i've been saying on my channel and the person who first got me into this obsession stage was a guy called Face Another Mess, and he's also got some fantastic videos on his channel. And he he was the person who like properly opened my eyes. And once I reached this stage of obsession, I honestly couldn't believe that I used to believe in the blue pill or RP before that. So I used to watch a lot of content creators. You guys know, I'm not going to name any names, but you guys know who I'm talking about. I used to watch these content creators and be like, oh, you know, it's, it's just about having status, bro, or like women want an alpha male. And, you know, they, they, they speak in these vague terms and it's often like difficult to wrap your head around. And I, I would try to think, oh, if I just use this like one line and, you know, because I've watched this cringe video on why this one line, if I say these words in the correct way, then that's going to make a difference. Like, it's honestly so confusing how I even believed that that's what I used to think about. So the obsession stage is extremely significant. And I, what, the one last point I wanted to make on this was that I was so obsessed with it that not only I created this channel, but I also, like, I was telling every single person that I encountered when I 
discovered the BP for the first time. Like I was, you know, telling all of my friends, I was like, guys, have you known, like, have you seen these Tinder experiments? Have you seen this data? Have you seen all of this stuff to show just how important your looks are? And women, they, they care about looks. That's, that's by far the most important thing. I was just telling everyone. And even a few months later, I got a girlfriend for the first time and off of the back, I would mainly argue of discovering the BP and knowing how important looks are and looks maxing and all of that stuff. And I was just telling her like all about it. And it even got to the point where she would be like, wait, wait, you're talking about the BP again. You're talking about looks again. But I didn't care because I was just so obsessed with it. I was so passionate about it and it was constantly on my mind. And I didn't care on top of that because on the inside, as I was talking about all of these subjects, I was like, this doesn't matter because at the end of the day, she's not going to be bothered by the fact I'm only talking about this subject or talking about it way too much. Like, I'm not a social idiot. I knew that I was talking about it to everyone and talking about it a lot, but I didn't care because I knew it wouldn't make a difference anyway. She would still be my girlfriend despite the fact that I was essentially a broken record talking about the same thing all day every day that's how like far deep in the bp i was i just knew that like looks is is what's doing all of the legwork here so it doesn't matter if i'm self-sabotaging myself in some regard because I, I can afford to be selfish that way just because i know that the, the looks is doing the legwork and i was in that stage for quite a long time obsession and i'm sure most of you guys watching uh, are in this stage now and that's when you, you you know you're in this stage of obsession when you're watching like BP content from loads of different creators you're constantly thinking about it and every time you walk out in the world you're like analyzing people and you're you're thinking like oh you know that's a looks match couple oh no surprise this guy um you know he, he's with some overweight chick the reason is is because he's a low tier normie and he can't do any better like you, you're constantly analyzing people and deriving all of these conclusions and most of them are correct mind you like most of these conclusions are true when you're analyzing people in the world and that's when you know you're in this uh, obsessed obsessed stage but then the final stage is what i would say i'm at now and i've been this in i've been in this stage for at least 6 months if not a year and that's just acceptance where you've been thinking about it for so long that you get to the point where you think you know what i've just seen it all i've seen everything now i don't need to be obsessed with it anymore why do I need to keep thinking about it and analyzing people and, you know, do, doing all of this stuff? Because it, it, it's pointless. Like, it's all just obvious now. Like, of, of course, women care about looks. It, it, it's all just so obvious to me. So I don't need to waste any more time or energy over analyzing and thinking about this stuff because it, it's just not necessary anymore. And that's the stage that I'm at now. Like, I still know all of the aspects of the BP and... Obviously, if I see examples in real life, I'm still thinking like, oh yeah, that's BP. But it doesn't shock me anymore. It doesn't make me think, wow, um, that, that's insane. Because I've just seen it all now. I'm just, as soon as I see a couple that aligns with the BP line of thought, I'm just like, oh, okay, that's exactly what I expected. And I don't react in any way. I don't react in any way. Because uh, I'm just that far deep in it that I, it, nothing surprises me anymore. It's just all in a line with what I already know. So this has been a really beneficial thing for me because I have been able to open up space in my mind for thinking about other things. And I don't need to obsess over th this concept anymore. Anyway, like that that's basically the full story of how I went through these three stages. I want to know what um, you guys if you, if you agree with these stages, in fact, I might do a poll quickly. I'll let BP, uh, Turbo BP, respond to what I've said there and see if he's gone through the same stages as well. But while he's responding, I'll conduct a poll to see if you guys in the audience have also went through these stages too. Go ahead, BP, Turbo BP. Tell us what you think. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with your um, with your three stages. So basically, they're, um, it's first blue pill, and then it's the shock after you discover the BP and then you kind of pull back from that a little bit and you don't think about it as much, right? Yeah, that's essentially how it is. Would you say yeah, that you've well, went what, through what these I stages? Found, yeah, I went through these stages as well, but in a slightly different way. And I, I just want to say, like, what 
I was very surprised to hear from you that you were telling everyone about about BP, and you even told a girl who you were dating about BP. Like that is insane to me. I would never yeah. do that. No, I literally and, uh, didn't no, care. I, I, well, as I explained, I literally didn't care because I knew it would make no difference whatsoever. Like I was only thinking about myself, and um, I, I knew that it wasn't optimal to talk about it with her. And maybe she would have uh, liked me five percent more if I didn't talk about it all the time with her. But I knew it wouldn't make a difference in the grand scheme of things anyway, because once you learn the BP, you realize what you say to your romantic partner, it means barely anything. It means barely anything because it's all your looks doing the work anyway. Yeah, I, I might become, I might, this might be like a blue pill take on my part, but I think that it is, it is that that does make a big difference. And I think that having BP slash RP views and expressing them to, to women can definitely be a deal breaker for a lot of women um it, like especially like G generation z you know like I, I don't know how it is about older women but i think like they like accept like right wing political views example for example like that they're more accepting of that but it, it's it's a lot like you know, less uh, it makes you very unlikable from my experience if you just say that in your social circle or to women whom you're talking to you know, like they, most women, they wouldn't, you know, unless you're a Chad or Chad Light, maybe they, they don't tolerate like a BP or RP guy. Do you think I, that's accurate? I understand what you're saying. Um, I think it's true to some degree, but I've seen exceptions to that. I, I, I've seen times where it's been true for what, you, for what you're saying. And I've seen exceptions to that as well. So obviously some women who are like really sensitive and like despise uh, you know, people like Andrew, I'm, I'm not going to say his last name, people who despise Andrew, everyone knows who I'm referring to here. Nazi owner. Yeah, exactly. So for the, for some women out there who like say like, oh, I hate guys who love Andrew. Um, you know, if I ever meet one of these guys and I, I just not going to talk to him and it's, it's an instant red flag. If, if I'm on a first date with him, I'm going to walk out. Like I've come across those women and it's true. Like if you start trying to make justifications or defending to his point of view then the the women will get upset about it and th th there's nothing you can do i think even a chad won't be able to get away with it however in other situations like i've seen if a woman is giving me choosing signals like i i, I know i'm saying an opinion right now where she disagrees with but because i know that she is interested in me then it, i'm able to get away with it but if it was a guy who she didn't give those choosing signals to if she didn't find attractive then she would respond to it in a more aggressive manner like the, the difference in terms of the response is quite eye-opening so i think if a woman likes you and you say an opinion that she disagrees with then her response will be like oh okay you know why why do you think like that um you know what's the thought process behind that like tell me more about it she's very inviting and open and she comes with an open mind but if you say an opinion that she disagrees with and she doesn't like you, then now it becomes, oh, you know, you're just a hater. Oh, blah, blah. And, and, and she starts throwing all of these insults at you and she doesn't give you the time of day. She doesn't give you a chance to defend yourself. She, she's just Im immediately hurling insults at you because you, you bring no value to her and she's already got her mind made up. Do you know what I'm tr trying to say? Yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say. And... Um, going on uh, because you you mentioned choosing signals like um, what what would you rate yourself out of ten? I'd rate myself a six out of ten. Okay, so you're 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 an above average guy. So I think for guys who are above average, if they talk about the importance of looks, it's going to be okay. I mean, it, it depends on the on the woman, obviously, but it's not going to be as bad as it is for a guy who's below average or a guy who's below average in height, because for him. When, if like a three out of ten five foot five guy talks to a, a woman about the importance of looks, that's only going to come off come off as insecurity. Like she, I don't think she's going to think, oh, like that's an interesting point of view you have. Like, what makes you think that? Like, I, she's just going to judge him as being insecure. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And one thing, an another point that I have found like really interesting and eye opening is that if a woman likes you and gives you choosing signals then she she has no issue 
telling you the truth about the BP. Like, you would be surprised just how many BP a woman spills if she already likes you because she knows that she's not going to offend you. She's going to tell you, like, oh, yeah, um, I was talking to this other guy and I'm just leading him on at the moment because I don't know if I'm a, I find him attractive, but he's still, like, good to, you know, use his attention. Like, I think even women, deep down, they want to tell people about the BP. They, they want to tell everyone they know just how much they care about looks but they don't because they they don't want to offend people they don't they don't want to offend guys who they find unattractive but for the guys that they do find attractive they have no issue telling them about the bp and how much they care about looks because they're not going to offend them i've I've seen that at least a couple times in my life um i i disagree with you somewhat here i think that a lot of women don't realize how much looks matter to them. Like they genuinely believe that it is like 80% the guy's personality. Yeah, you do get those women as well, but it's a mixed bag. Some women, especially those with more dating experience who have, you know, like been out consistently and been with quite a lot of guys, they've they've like understood the BP a lot more. Like in, in fact, when you look at women who are, you know, like, because because women in, eventually internalize the BP themselves. If if they're beyond thirty and they like need to settle down, like they they eventually realize the BP in the respect that they accept. You know what? I'm only a five out of ten woman. I've been chasing these eight out of ten chads this entire time, but they're only using me for short term. So you know maybe I do need to go for the Jeffrey, who's a five out of ten on my level all of this time. So they the, these women who are you know, settle for, settling for the beta box, they've had the most dating experience and they've also internalized a BP the most out of any women. But for the women who, let's say, you know, they got very little dating experience and, you know, they're more pure. I think there's more obliviousness out of these women. And then I think they're more likely to spread blue pills to male friends. Do you agree with that statement? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, but I, I think it is, well, because I, I, I think that you have a lot more experience with women than, than me, so you know more about this. But the, t to me, the, the thing that makes, like, the biggest difference between blue pillars and B pillars and red pillars is, is like, the, the mindset, the kind of lens that they see the world through. And to, now I'm just going back to um, how, like, like the three stages of the BP, the reason that the BP ap appealed so much to me is because I, I, I felt like there, it was the only like community of people who actually saw the world in this kind of like hardcore way. If, if you know what I mean, it's because I, I, I always kind of saw life as like, it, it is a competition, you know, it is like a, a dominant, there is dominance hierarchy, you know, like, um, and like you, you should compare yourself to others because, like, it is a race. And and people who were blue pilled, they would say, "Oh, it's it's not about winning, bro." You know, like, don't compare yourself to others, bro. And I, I just didn't like that because that just it wasn't the mindset that I saw the world through, and it appealed to me so much the the BP because most people in the BP from from what I've seen do think this way, right? And I I, I went through a similar phase that you did. I, I learned the hard way that I shouldn't talk about BP. To my social circle because i did that and it just didn't it just led to like negative social um results but because but because of 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 that i like learned how differently like blue pilled people see things and i don't think i think like that how you talked about when women realize like, the women internalize the bp i think that I, I i don't know like there's no way i can prove it but i don't think that most of them are really actively thinking about it in that kind of analytical way i think most of it is just like unconscious you know because to, to i don't think that the average person is thinking about people people being as high value or low value um just judging just from comments under videos that criticize the bp people f find it so offensive to even classify people as high or low value they find they think it's like it is it is very like disrespectful to even like as ascribe like different levels of value to different people you know what i mean like 
Yeah, I, I really don't think that women are thinking that way. Yeah, that's true. Like, the, okay, the, the 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 difference is, and the way that I think I was able to get away with telling almost everyone I know about the BP and not having um, any issues was because I would be like diplomatic and I would tell people about the BP without ever mentioning the BP. It reminds me of this uh, video I saw when this guy, it, it was essentially like a veganism propaganda video, but he didn't mention veganism once. And like a lot of people in the comments were like, oh, this is like really cool. And, and they've essentially been persuaded to, you know, learn more about veganism without it even being mentioned. And that's how I would try to tell people in my life about the BP. So here's a good way for anyone uh, watching who, you know, is, is, is wondering what I'm thinking about. So the way I would often do it, I would like ask an innocent seeming question such as like, do you think women and men can be friends? And now that sounds on the surface like a blue pill question. It sounds, you know, innocent and it's not got these BP connotations. And a lot of people would have been asked that question before themselves and it would have been a topic that's been on their mind for quite some time as well. So it just, the, the people still think that you're a normal blue pilled person when you ask them a question like that. But then the, the what's interesting is that the answer to that question, if the answer is no, which it is, the answer is no, Women, men and women can't be friends, especially if they're both attractive enough, then it means that you, you can BP them without um, ever actually saying about the BP. And I, I've done this a couple of times. So uh, there's this video on YouTube where it's like this guy going around asking guys and girls if a man and a woman can be friends. And all of the men are saying bps indirectly so they're saying like no of course not like um you know because i'm going to find the woman attractive i'm going to want to be with her romantically and physically and then all of the women are giving blue pilled answers and saying like oh no um yeah of course of course men and women can be friends it's not a problem i've got loads of friends and then the i think the interviewer is probably even bp'd himself because he starts asking the women more pressing questions like you know do you have any f male friends right now and then the women are like, yeah, of course I do. And then the next question he asks is, do you think that any of these guy friends you have are secretly interested in you? And then all of the women are like, oh yeah, uh, Jeremy definitely is. Oh, Chris definitely is. Yeah, I know he is. And, and then he's like debunked what they're talking about and he's BP'd them without actually saying a single BP terminology. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, I, I get what you're trying to say, um, but that is like, it's such a more sanitized version of the BP that I wouldn't even call it that. And I think t for it to qualify as BP, you need to, like the view needs to be different enough from the mainstream to the point where most people would disagree with it. That's, I think that's the requirement really? for being able to call something BP or RP. Yeah, oh, okay. because... Go ahead. Just just saying that looks sadder is it's not BP because most I think most people do acknowledge that looks matter to an extent. Hmm. I understand what you mean, but I, I think it's a distilled version. I think it's a distilled version because oh, what's the point I was just about? Yeah, the the point I was just about to say is that if you ever try to teach people the BP is a similar way of as of how I describe in my videos, then they're going to get really, really annoyed and they're going to be upset by it. And that makes sense because they are going to be offended by it. The, the main issue is the colloquialisms. So this isn't just the BP community, but the RP community as well. We have all of these colloquialisms. You guys know what colloquialisms I'm talking about, but people get extremely, extremely offended by these colloquialisms. And if you say these to people, they, they think that you're, um, you know, a, a person who hates certain members of society. I'm not, I'm going to be very diplomatic in the way I'm talking about here. But you, you guys know what I'm trying to say. So the way that I've always gotten away with discussing the BP to regular people is that I would shut off all of the colloquialisms and the way I would usually describe things to my audience. And I would BP people without them even necessarily knowing about it. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, if, if you stick to the basics, like if you try to prove that looks matter, there's a way you can try to prove looks matter without going in depth about like face ratings. Like if, if you start rating faces and doing all of this stuff, they're going to get upset about it. If you say like, oh, you know, if, if you was with an eight out of 10 guy, you might do this. But if you was with a four out of 10 guy, you might friend zone him and do all of this stuff. If you start saying that, then women are going to get offended by it because you know, they, they hear the face rating stuff and they're like, oh, you're just a superficial person. Why are you rating guys like that? You know, assuming that we all have different values, like we're all equal and stuff like this. You know, if you go down that route, then yeah, fair enough. You're asking to get women be offended by what you're saying. But if you are more tame with it and you find a different way of phrasing, so you are more diplomatic in your approach, then I think uh, I've even known in my own life that I've been able to do it so many times. And the women end up becoming on board with me by the end of the conversation too. Okay, well, that's um, that does surprise me a bit that the women would actually be on board. Maybe you just present it in a very diluted way because um, I don't see that happening with uh, with me. But uh, just that, that I, I think we should move on from this. And uh, I want to ask you about your your recent debate with Jasmine Jafar on Playing With Fire. How do you think you performed on that debate? Yeah, I, I don't think that that was my strongest performance, if I'm not going to lie. And I actually wanted to... that was your strongest performance? No, I said I don't think it was my strongest performance. I think it oh, was... Okay. If It might even be the weakest one that I have had a debate. And the reason is, it actually relates to what I was talking about at the very start of this stream, which is that I've reached the stage of the BP now where it's acceptance. Like... I'm never going to change my mind on the BP ever. Like, you know, unless the clock is rewound 200 years and we're back to chivalry and, you know, women aren't in the workplace anymore and they have no other choice but to date guys for money. Like, unless something catastrophic happens like that, then I'm, I'm never going to change my mind on the BP. Like, I'm so certain of the BP that it, it's 100%. Like, nothing's ever going to change my mind. But because I've reached this stage of acceptance it means that I'm not thinking about it perpetually now. So if I had the same debate with that Jasmine woman, say 1.5 years ago, I think that it would have been a completely different story because as you saw in the debate, I didn't even have all of my usual statistics and facts that I would have, that I've, I've brought up in previous debates to counter standard arguments of how people try to debunk the BP. And I didn't, I didn't have the counter evidence for it because... Like, I've just lost touch. I've, I'm not in that obsessed state where I'm constantly thinking about all these Tinder experiments, all but this data, this study that proves how much height matters. I'm not thinking about that all of the time. So I think now I've reached this stage of acceptance. I have reached a point where I don't need to try and prove the BP to anyone. I know what I believe in. And I was unprepared for that debate because I, I, I just have reached this stage of acceptance now. Oh, so so you think that you that the reason that you that wasn't your strongest was just because you you reached that acceptance? Yeah, uh, I, it, I think that, that might lead you to not like search for new studies and like more data. So you didn't like that stuff wasn't fresh in your mind, right? So you didn't have as much data to go off of. Yeah, I'm saying that um, I, I I don't need to see any new data or studies because I'm so set in my way on this like you know I, I know that sounds like quite bad to you know have a fixed mindset on this and you should always try to be learning and have an open mind but when it comes to the BP nothing is ever going to change my mind on that that that's just how it is for me because I could go down the rabbit hole again I could go back to that obsession stage where I'm researching all of the BP studies and watching all of these videos, presentations, in fields, Tinder experiments, cold approaches, you name it, you name it, and how all of these prove the BP again. I, I could reach those same conclusions, but why would I want to do that? Why, why, why would I want to go back down that rabbit hole? Like, I'm at the stage of acceptance now. I'm, I'm putting it behind me. I, I don't need to go back to that state. And, and I'm right, as, so, so, to say one more point on that, like I don't think I'd ever get to the point where I try to go down the rabbit hole and I don't come to the same conclusions. I think if I do go down the rabbit hole, I'm just going to come exactly to the same spot where I am now, which is the stage of acceptance. I don't think there's any possibility that I explore new data or I start 
thinking about it a bit more or I start watching some blue pill guys streams and videos and I'm like oh well you know what women don't actually care about looks that much you know what it is mostly about your personality you know what like you, the dating market isn't as bad as I, I used to think I don't think that's ever going to happen so I don't think I ever need to go back to learning about this stuff because I'm, I'm just so fixed in my ways now about this mm, that that is really interesting because you and I are very different on this uh, on this aspect. Um, I I'm not sure at all that I'll continue to be BP'd. You know, maybe even as short as like five years from now, I might not consider myself BP'd anymore because my my BP beliefs from from that obsession stage that I used to be in, right? My beliefs have actually like shifted back closer to to the to the blue pill in in some ways. Um, wow, that's did, surprising. Did you want to provide some examples? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that okay. is surprising to a lot of my audience, but I can provide just some examples. Yeah, go, go, go ahead and provide an example. Yeah, so, so like this, this is, I was trying, I wanted to make a video about uh, fe female promiscuity, but so and I wanted to find some like studies and data to support some of the claims that I was going to make, which is like pretty strong claims. But I, I was trying to look for a study that showed the average body count increasing over time, but was also high in number. And I only found one study that had a body count averaging between like 10 and 15, you know, but um, that wasn't over time, right? So I wanted to, to show it increasing over time. But as much as I looked, I couldn't find a study that confirmed the belief. And like, the thing is, I was already confirmation bias maxing by even doing this. And okay. I still couldn't even find what, what I needed to support my belief. So then I, I thought that I caught myself being quite dogmatic in, in my BP beliefs, right? Okay, okay. If I could yeah, just interject right there quickly, because um, yeah. that that's, when I'm talking about I'm fixed in my ways and, you know, have my mind made up about the BP and I'm never going to change my mind, that's not one of the aspects. And in fact, I don't think many BP YouTubers actually talk about this point very often. It's mainly the RP side of YouTube who are constantly... Uh, you know, they, they, they women bash. Like, that's most of the videos that they're uploading. They're like, oh, all of these women, they're just going around, sleeping around with the top 10% of guys. Like, you know, I, I'm not saying that stuff on my channel. I am saying that the top 10% have a monopoly, but I, I don't necessarily believe that women, like, all women are, you know, having short-term fun times with them non-stop. Like, it's, it's going to be... I think the data I've seen on it is that it is a hockey stick curve. So just like there's a top 10% of men who have the highest body counts, there's also a top 10% of women who have the highest body counts. But the difference is, is that the top 10% of men with the highest body counts, they're, the vast majority of them are good looking guys who are tall and, you know, have higher social IQ and have numbers game max and everything like that. But for the top 10% of women who have the highest body counts, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily the highest value. A lot of them are like some average, potentially even below average women because the women, it, there's zero barriers to entry for a woman to get a high body count. It doesn't matter if she's a four out of 10. If, if, if you was born a woman tomorrow and Obviously, you waited for the first 18 years of your life to bypass. If you wanted to, by the time it was your 19th birthday, you could easily get a body count of 100, even if you're a 3 out of 10 woman. That's not an exaggeration. Just look at the Tinder experiment of some ugly woman to see how many guys are offering short-term fun times for that. So, you know, that, that is a subtle difference. Like, when I'm, when I'm talking about there's beliefs of the BP that I'm never, ever, ever going to change my mind on, it's the importance of looks. It's, it's the key pillars. It's the importance of height, looks, and all things related to that. Like, the, these side topics, like the one you mentioned about body counts and, you know, female promiscuity, I think they're mainly red uh, RP talking points. <laughs> yeah, um... I do think the RP and BP are related in like in in terms of like the types of people that that be, that believe them because uh, usually they, they both of these tend to lean conservative, whereas the the blue pill tends to lean more lean more like liberal or progressive. But about um, that that I, I just want to like address your point about women bashing. Like my channel, I'm not, I know that you're not saying my channel does this, but. I, I'm, my goal isn't to do that at all. Um, I was just going from a perspective of like, 
hey, these are this is some of the the things that are happening in the dating market today. And I was going to talk about how that affects men um, in, in like a men's issues sort of way. Um, about your, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I do think, agree with you that there might, there are probably some things that I'm not going to change my mind about on the black pill. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> the B, the B pill, the B pill, my, my bad. Um, but, uh, I, I just want to bring up one more example. Um, cause I was looking for this study that showed how professors gave attractive female students higher grades, right? And that's a study that I've heard cited by some other like BP and RP YouTubers. But when I, at first, I found the study like first time a few years ago, and I thought, oh, yeah, this just proves how important looks are, right? It even matters in academics, in education. This just proves how important looks are. But when I wanted to make a video citing that, that study, I looked at that study again, and then I found that the difference in looks, that the difference in the grades was actually so small I don't know if you're familiar with like the American G GPA system, grade point average, but it was like being attractive as a woman gave you like a plus 0 0.024 advantage and being unattractive gave you a minus 0 0.067 advantage. So I realized that at first I didn't even look at the data and I was just drawing like these kinds of extreme conclusions. Okay. But the reality didn't support the kinds of conclusions that I was making. Okay, yeah. With, with that... Um, particular example, that's not the kind of thing that I would endorse. And I would be very skeptical about a study like that or any YouTuber claiming that that's the outcome because it just doesn't sound realistic to me. Like, I'm talking when, when I'm talking about the aspects of the BP that I'm never going to change my mind on, it's all of the common sense BP undeniable facts where if, if you were to do a like formal study on it like because obviously a tinder experiment isn't a formal study but if you were going to do a formal study on the importance of looks on tinder and you had some chad who was jacked and had great photos and had six foot five in his bio versus some guy who was a sub five and horrendous photos or even just an average guy because the average guy gets no matches on dating apps then if there was a formal study about that then the correlation factor would be 0 0.99999 you know like the the maximum that the correlation factor can go and all of the other factors would just be irrelevant like that's that's undeniable but for you know um, a, a smaller aspect of the bp such as um you know how does looks affect professors treating you in the class like you know like grades stuff like that i would expect the correlation coefficient for those kind of studies to be very low like less than 0 0.1 so they're, they're not aspects of the bp that i'm ever going to be on board on but with regard to dating and women's preferences and guys the bp with regard to looks like it's minimum correlation coefficient 0 0.7 minimum Okay, um, I, I can see I can see zero point seven, but uh, yeah, the zero point nine nine was an exaggeration. Yeah, that was part, an exaggeration. But, um, yeah, and, and I was gonna bring up like it's it's like a one one off ex anecdotal example, but like the most isn't the most swiped guy on Tinder only like a, a six out of ten. I haven't seen that. No. No, because because I think on, on on Tinder, like the quality of your photos matters a lot, uh, and and of course looks and height matter too, but um. Things like photos actually make a big difference, and and I've seen that from watching channels like PWF. Yeah, I, I agree that your photo quality does make a big difference. So, to win on Tinder, you need two things, and the first is decent enough facial attractiveness. If you're anything who's a five or below, then you, you, you're gonna you you might as well write off. Um, ever having a good chance even if you get good photos your results are going to be pretty lackluster it's not to say that you won't be able to get occasional dates if you optimize everything but it's going to be like you know once a month which you know is pretty appalling it would it would be a higher ev decision to looks max to a six first and then try to optimize everything else such as getting the high quality photos such as um spamming messages and optimizing texting rather than trying to optimize Tinder as a 5 out of 10. And the second thing you need is the optimal photos. So to, to boil it down to the bare bones, 
you need two things. You need to be at least a 6 out of 10 and you need to have good photos. However, if you're an 8 out of 10, you no longer need to have good photos. And just having some shirtless mirror selfies at the gym with some good lighting can be enough to still get decent results. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. Um, I do want to ask you, like, um, I think you have more experience on Tinder than, than I have. So um, do you think it's it's that guys are being, um, like, honest when they say that they have no matches? Okay. Um, the, the only t t experience on Tinder I have, well, at least recently, was the Tinder experiment I did several months back. But being on Tinder for a week... You know, that's all the information you really need to know how the game works. And, you know, you're going to get a massive amount of data just from being on it, in, on it a week. And you can figure out how attractive you are. Um, but to answer your question about how... Remind me of the question. So it's the guys who say that they get zero yeah, yeah. matches. Yeah, okay. I do. So, it's, it's in the comments, I see guys who are average, who say that they're like average looking, average height, and they claim to have zero matches. And I just think like, doesn't the Tinder algorithm make it easy for you in like the first 24 hours? It's like, it does. I, I find it hard to believe that they would actually get zero. It's it not zero. Like it's not zero, but it's very, very low. So I think, how, how many years ago was this now? I think it was either 2.5 or, yeah, 2.5 2 to 3 years ago was the last time that I was on Tinder as an average guy with mediocre photos. And I think I got like about 10, less than 10 matches on the first day when it was a fresh new algorithm. And then there was like days after that where I'd literally get zero. And then I'd get like the odd match or I'd get liked by a woman who was extremely unattractive or there would be, if it was like some decently attractive woman then it would be a bot or there'll be some like you know of seller i think i experienced that a couple of times you know it's if, if it's too good to be true then it is so it is an exaggeration to say that when, when average guys talk about getting no matches but what i more think that they're trying to say is that there's no legitimate matches who would actually be potential so so you know they are getting matches with three out of ten women women that are two three points below their level however um you know they don't count and they're also getting matches with bots and women that are trying to sell their of and farming instagram followers that's another big one women that try to farm instagram followers um you know but they don't count as well so you know it's, it's not zero matches but if you get rid of all of the fluff it, it is zero matches yeah i, I don't I see what you mean, but I, I don't agree with counting unattractive like women whom you aren't attracted to as, as a uh, like not not counting as matches because the only way you can match with them is if you swipe on them. So like, what are you doing, bro? If you don't count, no. now here's here's what I have to say about that is, what you, a lot of people say that like the the number of matches you get on Tinder is like proportional to your your SMV basically, but I think that you you do need to take into account your own standards on Tinder because a guy who swipes right on ninety percent of women on Tinder is going to get more matches than a guy who only swipes right on twenty percent. No, and that's not true. Just, that's not true because if you swipe right on ninety percent of women, then the algorithm will punish you because you're swiping right on essentially every single woman. And I would change the phrase that you said about your matches being proportionate to your SMV. It's okay, it's yeah, not. Richter, it's not. It's not proportionate. It is. It's like, aren't, aren't you going to make a point about the, the Richter scale? I'm not saying it's like linear. I'm just it's, saying it's not it's, even about like, like the Richter scale. In fact, I'll just do like a quick rough draft on uh, this, this PowerPoint. Like this is the way it is. Um, it's, it's not even a Richter scale. The, the latter half of it is a Richter scale. But for the first like six points of SMV, it's like nothing. So if you're like a five out of 10 with um, bad photos on Tinder, then your, your results are the same as a guy who's a 3 out of 10 in SMV. So, like, this is a 3 out of 10 guy. And then, you know, his results hey, aren't are going to be any different. Your... I'm showing oh, these... Sharing I'm showing the screen uh, yeah, on the stream. So, the only way that you'll be able to access it is if you um, go on the stream on YouTube if, in another tab or something. Yeah, yeah, I'll just... I'll just open up the stream real quick, but um, I'm just going to like mute it so um, the audio okay. isn't doubling. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. 
So it basically looks like this. The, the, the latter half is exponential. So you start getting results if you're like a 6 out of 10. Like you might lock out a couple of times if you're a 6. And then if you're like a 7, then it's, it's like 5 x compared to what the six gets and then if you're at eight it's another five x again compared to what the seven gets so the latter half is the um exponential growth the hockey stick chart but from three to five it's all invisible like there's a massive invisible zone on online dating apps it's it's that cutthroat yeah yeah um obviously I've only been I've only been me so I, I and I haven't run any tinder experiments because I just yeah. haven't like I just didn't think it was worth the time but um you know I, I can't say anything about it because I haven't done it myself so I can't verify oh. this but well, you, you might like, have seen uh, experiments from PWF and people like that yeah I think it's a decent model but it's like I think that the going it going to zero above a five is just it, it it's going to be zero at like three, but it's not going to be all the way at the bottom. It's not going to stay flat all the way until like 5.5, like you put it there. Okay, I might like shift this ever so slightly to the left. So it starts at five. But honestly, a five out of 10 guy with average photos, he's not going to get any luck on dating apps. That's just that's just how it is. Like ask any of the 400 sure guys watching luck, the stream man. right now who are five out of tens. And, you know, if, if they're getting any results on Tinder then I guarantee you they'll, they'll all say collectively no. Like, the, the game starts on Tinder at 6 out of 10. And, that, and that's just where it starts. Like, that's not even to get a good run on on these dating apps. But in reality, like, the, 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 the true results, the ideal results, starts at 7.5, ideally 8. Yeah. Like, um, you, you know, you've you heard, like, the 80-20 rule. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, it is like the the, the eighty twenty rule. But I see this guy. I just open up the stream. And I see these guys in the chat calling me Turbo Blue Pill. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm not surprised. Based it's on the fact. Like, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't. I don't think it is Blue Pill because I think that it is that this this is fundamentally about facing the reality. Like I don't think guys should. It's kind of like the. I don't know. It's kind of like a cope where you get women on on dating apps that you're not attracted to, and then you say, "Ah, oh, they don't count. They don't count." But you need to face the reality and say, hey, I get women and I'm choosing not to be with them because I don't find them attractive, right? And that's, that's the most accurate, objective reality. No, to say that they don't count, I don't even think that's true. Cold. No, because I think one time um, there was like some three out of 10 women that I matched with and just for a laugh. And I think people have done Tinder experiments, experiments with this as well. Like, you know, because no matter who you are, you're going to get the matches with the 3 out of 10 girls. Like, even the 8 out of 10 guys will get those 3 out of 10 matches. And just for a laugh, I think one time I tried, like, messaging them to the best of my ability just to see if anything would happen with it. And then they still flaked, like, the rest of them. So it's not that I'm rejecting them. They're still rejecting me. Like, I match with them, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, um... I mean, if you're if still like, why are you swiping on women who you're not attracted to? It's just for just for like the 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 fun of the Tinder experiment, I guess. Um, yeah, just as just as a really, laugh, just to like you know yeah, reinforce my own. Or... Sorry, go on. No, I'm just okay. And I well, mean, I was... of course, I, I think people people do that, but I, I don't know if these they're like eight out of ten guys who are using Tinder seriously who are still swiping on the threes just to to validate their ego and go like, oh, one more match, bro. It's like. If you don't find them attractive, don't swipe on them. If you're an eight, you can afford to make that kind of dis discrimination, you know? Yeah, pe people aren't doing that. But what I'm saying is, have you seen the Tinder experiments where they have some three out of ten women and see how many matches they get? And there's like five out of ten, six out of ten guys who are legitimately messaging the woman. And it's, it's not just like uh, bare minimum messaging, like, you know, immediately like come over implying that they know that the woman is significantly beneath the guy's level. Like, they're taking it seriously, which says to me that they've tried messaging other 3 out of 10 women before, and they're still getting no results. Um, yeah, I think that's, that, like, that's like, a worthwhile insight. Like, what, what it comes down to is that, like, for dating apps, it's so cutthroat. It's undeniably BP. There's There's no... 
way that anyone can say it's not. And if you're an eight out of ten guy, you've got like a massive bag of raisins. Like you're getting a big bag of raisins, and you've got all of the abundance, and it's easy. And if you're like a five or a five point five at six at the most, you're getting like a small handful of some shriveled up raisins. Or you, you have some decent looking raisins, which once you actually go to try bite it, it's 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 horrible and it's it's terrible. Like th- these are your OF salesmen and your Instagram farmers. And then if if you're anything below a five, then you're getting absolutely nothing. You you you're not even getting any raisins. So it's it's that big of a disparity between the eights and the, the normies and then the the sub fives at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I like your I like your raisin analogy. Um, I, I would talk about this more, but I think we're spending too much time on the on the dating okay. apps. But um, yeah, I wanted to kind of tie you're this right. we, we got, the- um, Yeah, we, we'll go into the next material now. So, do you want me to bring up yeah, the comment I'll, that you I'll, have? I'll, yeah, I'll just I'll tie. Uh, no, not the comment. Actually, I want you to first bring up the uh, quadrants because I'm tying the dating apps thing into into um different like kind of beliefs that that these different pilled people have because. I see it a lot in the black in in, in the the comment section of the B pill, uh, under B pill videos that they say that B pill is the truth. B pill is looking at the data objectively, and blue pill is just cope. It's blue pill is cope, and I don't think that's accurate. I, I think I do think that blue pill is cope, and I, and I agree. I agree with the um, with the the B pill a, a more, but so much of our interpretation of data comes from our. Um, like fundamental um, beliefs about human nature, about how the world works. So, so for example, you um, in your in your debate with Jasmine, you you said that like people lie a lot in self-reported studies, but you don't like the study itself is the data, but you don't have data to to show how much people are lying, right? So that's still just based on a belief that you that you came. A conclusion that you came to from your experience, from your belief about human nature, that people are generally d- dishonest. But to a blue pillar, that would come across as extremely negative. And they're, to, to them, they don't think that it's plausible that that many people would lie on a study. And like that just highlights the fundamental difference in beliefs. It's not as simple as, oh, black pill is, th- um, sorry, again, um, it's, it's not as simple as like B pill is the truth and blue pill is cope because the, our interpretation of that data to, to come to the conclusions that we think are the truth still revolves around some some things that aren't backed up by data. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, but I think that the that there is data to show that women do often lie in these so-called studies because it, we, we've taken extrapolations from some studies, data that we do have, and applied it to these other studies where we, we don't yet have the data. So here's just an example. Like if you ask women what's most important on uh, dating apps or you know what do you look for in a partner, they will all say, oh, it's personality, oh, it's humor, it's a guy who's confident and you know all, all of this crap. But then if you look at the actions and you look at who they're actually swiping on, then you realize that it, it all points back to the BP and it's they're, they're swiping on the chats. So, you know, if, if we have data in that department to say that women are lying here, then if there's another potential issue that comes up, you know, like just just name one other thing in, in the BP where a, a woman might lie on a survey. Hello. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, did you, you were talking about women yeah, lying yeah. on? Yeah, I was, I was just, I was just gonna yeah. say, like, you know, name one other example where a woman might be inclined to lie on, like, you know, a, a different point tied to the BP. Oh, okay. So you want to give me an example of a of a survey I think women would lie on? Or, or what was the survey that Jasmine brought up in the stream? Oh, it's just that like it has a. I think it was done on like a. On sixty thousand people, it was the body the body counts of okay. men okay, and that's, their height. That's a good okay, yeah. So, so with regard to body counts, like you know, we don't have any data in the BP space to prove that these women are lying when they talk about their body counts. We don't. We 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 assume that they are lying. That it's actually higher than what 
they say in these surveys, but we don't have any proof for that. However, what we do pr have proof for is that in other topics related to the BP, that women do lie. And we can prove that by looking at the disparity between their words and their actions. So we're extrapolating that data from these departments and tying it to this other department. Do you know what I'm saying? So so I've essentially reached a conclusion, I'm sure many people have reached a conclusion as well in this space, that when it comes to self-reported studies, you might as well toss all of them in the trash. Because in some departments, we've proven that women are lying in these studies based on the disparity between their actions and words. So because of that, I'm extrapolating that data across all self-reported studies and saying that in all of these self-reported studies, chances are women are lying because their actions aren't always going to reflect their words. Yeah, I, th I think that's fair. Um, if you can, maybe after the stream, if you can send me those studies that show that women are lying, because I, I, I would like to see that because I haven't seen that before. Okay, I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll um, go digging. I'm, I'll look it up in you know my videos and stuff because I know I've uh, showed that in the past. So even like in my last video, I know this is just one anecdotal piece of evidence, um, and it's not a study. But my whole last video was about that woman who said about like the importance of smiling as a guy, and you know, um, if, if you want to be rated high, you need to show your teeth. But then it was blatantly clear that her actions showed opposite given the fact there was a guy she rated a one who was smiling. So, you know, that, that was plain yeah. evidence right there and there. So, you know, I know that's anecdotal, but, you know, I, I can look for the studies as well to, to reinforce my point even further. Yeah. Um, okay, well, what, what, you, what you put on screen, can you, can you, like, please put the original? Because I don't think that okay. the pessimism and optimism labels are accurate oh, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Because RP, I don't, RP is not pessimistic. It says pessimistic here, so I just, uh, um, you know, yeah, change it because because I think all of these were like synonyms, so I just thought it would, it was less confusing uh, to change no, it to negative. Pessimism slash. is more on the right than on the top. Wait, what? No, I think pessimism is more on the right than on the top. But isn't it pointing towards the top here? Oh no, no, it's it's like a pessimistic view of human nature. It's the idea that like you can't change people's behaviors on the macro scale to be more nice. It's not about being pessimistic about your individual success. That's kind of All what right. I'm trying to clarify. Okay, so you're pessimistic about human nature. Yeah, but you can still be optimistic that you can succeed, which is what the RP, RP believes. Okay, explain that then. Explain that corner first. Uh, you, do, you just want me to explain RP? Yeah, um, yeah. So how is it? Well, just, how can well, you be pessimistic on human nature and optimistic in terms of your own life um if you think that um like male competition is extremely ruthless it is just male nature to want to dominate and like obliterate all these other men female nature is ruthless they only go for the top percentiles of men they're always looking to upgrade you know they you know they don't they're not loyal they are are, are willing to to cheat you know like you can have a, a negative pessimistic view of, of human nature and you can think that these things are just like biological that these things aren't going to get better if you improve society but at the same time you can think that oh if i just put in the work then if i just put in the work then i can become that that man who's getting the lion's share you know what i mean oh, right, okay yeah i think i understand so you're saying that the rp represents pessimism of human nature that they think everyone is self-centered there's no generosity and there's no sympathy there's no empathy if if like you, you're going to be left to rot as a man if you um you know that that's just what the way that people treat you however that's countered by the fact that you can be optimistic in your own abilities to compete in this ruthless game and still come out on top that's is that what you're yes, referring it, to it, it, okay yes, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what i'm saying okay now as for bp how how does that um you know juxtapose that oh well, it's basically the same like um there's there's not much generosity there's not much you know sympathy out there you know people are ruthless the game is ruthless but you believe that they're that you're very limited by the cards that you're dealt that you don't have right. much control over where you end up Okay. Yeah. So, so, so like I, I see that. Like yeah. here, I'm not saying that every black pill, every every B pillar, believes 
every example that I'm listing in in these quadrants. I'm, I'm saying these are like the most like extreme like epitome of BP. So I'm not saying that every BP every BP guy believes that there's no free will, for example. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So um, moving on to the next quadrants, the one at the bottom, how are they optimistic about human nature? Um, yeah, so so they they believe that people are generally good and, and honest and true love exists. You know, you can, that, that people are, that women are, are generally loyal. They're not going to screw you over, you know, things like that. So okay. the classic blue pill uh, is like the, the optimistic, non-cynical view of human nature with an internal locus of control. So you still believe that you have the control and you can make, you can still come out on top. Whereas the dim blue pill but how, is how more would like they the do BP. That? How would a blue pill guy be able to take matters into his own hands and take advantage of this generous dating market? Oh, it's it's by improving improving your personality, like being more thoughtful, being more caring, being a being a good person, a moral person. Okay, so a bit like this is like the nice guy corner. So this is like the nice guy philosophy. Yeah. Like if I just simp for women, if I like hold the door open for ten thousand women, then you know that's all gonna be perfect. Yeah, hold the door open for ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm and gonna move on to the the dim blue pill now. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's basically with, with the blue pill, the the positivity about human nature. But you think that you're still limited by the factors outside of your control. So you're gonna think, okay, well, it, it is like this one's kind of complicated because you think that that human nature is good, but the way that humans behave in practice is bad because and it, it make it limits people right so things like discrimination it 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 hinders people's success and that's going to make it a lot more a lot harder for you to achieve success but you, since you have the positive view of human nature you think that if you just improve society like all of these things are social so you can get rid of everything that's holding people back so you can like get rid of heightism you can get rid of lookism get rid of racism if you just improve society because it's not baked into human nature Okay, what I thought you was going to say for this quadrant was something different. I thought that you was going to say that, like, you know, if, if, if you are able to find the relationship of your dreams, then everything will be perfect. However, at the same time, the woman of your dreams is going to fall right out of the sky. And it's just a matter of when you meet the right person, then you'll know about it. And that's who you're going to live happily ever after forever. That's like who I thought that you was going to say the dim blue pill is. Oh, yeah, Do you yeah, know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so it's basically yeah. like, you know, yeah. it's, it's the guys who, um, you know, think, believe in all of like this romance stuff and the, you know, uh, you, you are eventually going to live happily ever after someday, but it's just not your time right now. Like, you just haven't, the, the right woman hasn't walked into your life yet. So they still believe in an external los, locus of control for their own life because they are banking on time and luck and the right woman showing up for them to actually have the marriage and relationship that they've always wanted. However, they're not, you know, they, they don't believe that trying to force the amount of work. In fact, you even hear some people say like, you know, uh, you, you shouldn't try to force love. Like force, love Love is like a natural thing. And if you try to force it, then it doesn't work. And, you know, you, you just got to like wait for the right moment, wait, wait for the time to come. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that's a great example. That's like the, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's the example of, of like what would fit into that quadrant in terms of dating. But uh, I, I made this like overall chart to show how their mindsets apply to life overall, not only in dating. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. I actually quite like this chart. Maybe I'll make a more in-depth video, if you don't mind, because it seems that you've came up with this subject. Um, I might like add some ideas to yeah, it. I, I, was, I was inspired by your, your video that you made about your four quadrants, about how, how people cope in dating. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. I was going to say, it like, reminds me of similar similarities to that. If I was going to put myself on this chart, I would put myself right about here. Yeah, somewhere in this um, sort of range. Wait, I, don't, I don't think I can see your cursor. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm putting it like um, pretty pretty much in the middle of the BP quadrant. So, you know, I, I'm not one of these guys who believes 100% in genetic determinism. Like... You know, because I do think that work does have a place, especially if you're a normie. If you're a normie, then RP does work 
to some degree. Like you're not going to have as good as results as a Chad, like a natural Chad who's like born tall and had everything handed to him. But you can still get results if you're a normie and you practice the RP. Like I would even like put guys in different quadrants of where they should believe depending on what their the hand that they've been dealt is. So if you're a normie, I would even say that like having a belief system that's like in and around here is probably good because you understand that like women aren't all peaches and cushions. There are risks to dating and some women are out there just to, you know, uh, use you for like money, resources, attention. You understand all of those cynical parts of human nature, which, which is just how it is. But at the same time, you know that you can improve your dating life as a normie by doing all of the RP tactics. Uh, but if, if you're a sub five, or even like a Chad for that matter, like you're pretty much like right to the very right hand side of the chart because it's just all genetics if you're in either of those two camps especially for sub fives because even as a chad if you practice rp you're already going to have good results if you don't but you're going to get exceptional results if you like optimize for the numbers game and everything like that even more so but as a sub five it doesn't matter how much effort you put in unless we're talking extreme strategies such as geomaxing moving to countries which are significantly easier then you know, if we ex if we exclude that from the thinking process as a sub five, you you pretty much like are going to be right against the wall on on this chart. Um. Yeah. Um. Well, what what I was getting at about talking about how their about their their attitudes towards life is is that it's it's a BP idea that your your how your tendency to work hard is also influenced by genetics. Oh, I, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that. Matters, but... Yeah, no, I've heard that. I've heard that in an, like an economic sense as well. Like people that try to like justify um, leftism and socialism, they say like, "Oh, yeah, the guy who is uh, a doctor and has more money than the janitor, he might have worked harder, but he's also been born with a harder work ethic." Or you know, say say. It is a more tangible example because you know some people might go like down the genetics route of IQ and say that's what a doctor has more money. But let's say that there's one property developer and another property developer, so they're both in the same trade, but then one of them has twice as a successful business as the other person. Then you know I would attribute the more successful property developer as having um, a stronger work ethic he's worked more hours and he's developed more properties that's why he's got more money but then a person who might advocate for socialism they would say oh but the stronger property developer he was born with a greater desire to work hard so they're trying to like attribute it to genetics again which i think is far-fetched i think anyone can put in the hard work if if they want to and Tying this back to dating, for some guys, putting in hard work can be completely fruitless. If you're a sub five, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm talking about a true, true sub five here, not like you know some low tier normie who's overweight and they can look max to a six. I'm talking about a guy who's like a legitimate three, like in the face, and he's five foot five. For that person, all of his hard work, he can do it, but it's going to be fruitless at the end of the day because it's not going to make a difference to his dating life. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I know what you're trying to say. Um, I I don't think that everyone has the same like natural predisposition predisposition to hard work, and I think um, there are also genetic factors that, for example, influence like your your physique. Because, and I know that there are a lot of people out there who are obese, and it's like really hard for them to to lose weight. And and for me, like I've always been, like some not not lean, but like I've never been fat my entire life, and. It's not because I work harder. It's not because I have more discipline. I don't work harder than them. You know, like I, I can eat like fast food, eat complete like junk and I'm still not going to get fat. Like it's easy for me. Uh, I know it's not because of my hard work. Yeah, but that just means that they need to put in more work because I've always said this, like, you know, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. Of course, there are some genetic factors with regard to like body fat percentage. You know, some people have a higher set point which means that their body tends to store more weight. And you, you can look up like Polynesians of why they have some of the highest obesity rates in the world because their genetics lends itself to that because 
um, the, the way that they would gather food historically, they would have to go for significant periods of time without food. So their body stored f high amounts of fat in times where food was scarce in order to compensate for the times where... No, sorry, the opposite way around. So they, they, their body would store high amounts of fat when food was abundant in order to compensate for when food would eventually be scarce. So there are genetic factors there. Additionally, there are more genetic factors with regard to work ethic. So for some people, they don't even need to think about um, eating correctly and exercise. It's, it's just they have a higher set motivation point and other people they are more emotional and if they are upset about something then they will try to eat to bury their desires so they're going to need to fight more to compensate for that genetic disadvantage they have in their brain but the point is that i'm trying to make is that it just means that they're going to have to fight harder and they're going to need to put in more work because the truth is 200 years ago there weren't any obese people unless we're looking at like the top five percent of society and that's because the bottom 95 percent of plebs the poor people they literally had no option to be fat if they wanted to they were forced to be in okay shape not necessarily good shape because a lot of them were malnourished due to lack of nutrition and getting the full spectrum of you know uh nutrients and minerals in their in their body but they, they, they were guaranteed to not be fat out of force do you, do you know what i'm saying yeah i i see i see that exactly yeah like any, anyone so, can so become okay. in shape I, and anyone can become in shape if I, they put I in the work I, I, I agree that anyone can become in shape i think that you're right that they do need to work harder and all i'm saying is that the the bp part of it is that is exactly that that they will have to work a lot harder and some and because of that so the some of the people who need to work a lot harder aren't going to make it because it's too hard for them. Yeah, well, like, everyone well, the, should. What I and always end up saying, help. yeah, well, well, just to say one more thing about the uh, body fat percentage thing is that what I've always said is like a any guy or any woman who's currently overweight, if you put my mind into their body, I could get them in shape in six months, or if they're like extremely obese like 40 percent body fat 50 percent, then it might take longer but within um, whatever amount of time it is i guarantee you i'd be able to get them in shape as long as they're not like already in a hospital bed because they're you know that that like terrible right um so on, on the point of of like you putting your mind into their body and that you you have a, a mental advant advantage because um, well, I don't, I'm not sure if this is accurate. You can like tell me more detail, but I, I don't think that discovering the BP has ever made you feel negative or, or depressed or unmotivated. No, right? it never did. No, it, it that's like one thing I should have mentioned at the very beginning or based on the, um, you know, stages of the BP that I've went through. At no point did I ever like become depressed or, you know, become bitter or upset. Like, I just accepted that this is the truth of how it is. And I was actually happy that my eyes had been opened for the first time. And I was like, you know what? I'm so glad that I've learned this information now rather than wasting any more time. Because the mindset that I had, I knew that I wasn't going to waste any more time or face any more pointless rejections, getting friend zone a pointless number of times in future. Because now I know like how 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 it is I, I i finally discovered the truth so that's why i was actually happy when i first discovered the bp just because i was optimistic about the future i'm not going to waste any more time or have an inefficient life believing in the blue pill because otherwise if i didn't do that the other the alternative outcome would have been i would have stayed in my blue pill self and then for potentially another decade of my life i would have wasted time chasing the wrong women or you know getting rejected for pointless reasons which i didn't need to if i had already understood the bp and realized that it wasn't uh that, that that's just how it is or even like on tinder if you're a guy and you understand the bp i think it is a far less depressing experience because you think to yourself if you understand the bp you know what this is exactly what i expected because i know just how high women's standards are the bp taught me this so i I'm not surprised in the slightest that I'm getting no matches as an average guy on these dating apps because I know that women's standards are higher. But if you're a blue pill guy and you're all optimistic about 
you know, your value and you're going to find the love of your life. If you go on Tinder and you get no matches and match with bots, then that's going to be heartbreaking for you. Like, have you ever heard of that phrase? They say that um, unhappiness is your expectation, how high your expectation is above your reality. So if you've got super delusional, crazy high expectations, but then it becomes, the reality is underwhelming, you're going to be upset by that. Have you heard of that before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see how, how being B, BP'd can actually make you like, feel feel better about your dating life. Yeah, like, you know, just to tie an just, example just, of what I'm referring to. Sorry, one more thing. So, you know, if, if you go to New Year's Eve celebrations and you're expecting it to be fantastic and, you know, it's going to be incredible fireworks, blah, 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 blah. But then it was really disappointing. Then you're going to, you know, walk away from that experience sat. But if you instead had zero expectations, you're going to be like, oh, this is going to be a complete waste of time. And then you actually end up having a decent time. You're going to be more happy walking away from that. I think it's the same, you know, with where, when you go on to online dating apps is for the first time with either a blue pill mindset or a BP mindset. In my opinion, going into the dating apps with a BP mindset is definitely um, a, a the, the better outcome. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the argument I heard from some people. They, they say that pessimism is actually ideal because you'll never be disappointed. I've never heard of that before, but that sounds exactly like the oh, point no, that I just... I just internet somewhere yeah well you no know, but it's, it's like that new year's eve your new year's eve example and i'm just out of curiosity you said that after you discovered the bp your dating life improved dramatically right yeah it did well not like dramatically that's a bit of an exaggeration well if you're talking relatively it did it improved infinitely because i went from zero literally zero results whatsoever in to getting some results after discovering the BP, and that only happened once I s discovered the BP and started watching Face and the Lemesses videos. Um, but before that, I literally had zero to you know show for myself. So to go from zero to some is you know a, a massive achievement. Right, right. Um, well, I'm just out of curiosity. Like, what exactly did you do? Because it doesn't seem that seem like no like no disrespect to you, but it doesn't doesn't seem like the looks maxing that you did was all that drastic. So how did it it really improve your dating life? I would say it mainly improved my dating life. Well, personally, I think that the looks maxing was enough because um, there was a few things that I needed to clean up which I didn't have beforehand. But secondly, I, I would say the main way that it helped my dating life, and, and I even made a whole video on this about how the BP changed my life. You can check it out afterwards if you want a really concise answer for it. But the main way it helped me was that it helped me understand where I fall like in the hierarchy and what type of women I should be aiming for and you know, not wasting my time with women that are either too high or too low. And it also teaches you how to like calibrate yourself on, you know, the the the, the women that you're talking to. So, if you're talking to a woman who is say on your level and you're pedestalizing her or talking down to her that's going to come off like really strange because your value isn't in a line with the vibe that you're coming off with but if you're a six out of ten guy talking to a six out of ten girl if you're talking to her like an equal which is what the bp is gonna you know like grant you the information of then that's going to be the best outcome for speaking for that woman. I know that's like a little bit of a, uh, you know, wish, wishy-washy answer, but like it, for, for guys that have, you know, know what I'm talking about, they, they know what I'm talking about, that when you're talking to a woman who is on your level, there's just a different way that you speak to her than if she's below your looks threshold or above your looks threshold. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty interesting. Like, um, I haven't tried that myself. I just talk to every woman basically the same way. Hmm. Um, do you want to like uh, go into detail about how how you actually do that, or do you want to move on? Oh uh, no, we can move on to the next point. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can you can tell me about that another okay. time. Right. So. Um, so. So. Would you want to go? On I, I want to go on to. The, can you put on that that comment about the school of thought? Yep, I got that here now. Do you want me to read it out, or do you want to go ahead and read it out? Um, 
um, do do we have to read it out? Um, well, I think I think it makes sense because it's on the screen. Um, uh, I'll yeah. just read it out quickly. Okay. How about expanding the B pill outside of dating and B pill dumb? Getting BP'd about other things in life, areas such as business, history, education, where we are going as a species. I would love to see the BP become a larger school of thought like the RP. Okay, yeah, so, so so tying this back to the chart, um, to that chart, it's made about the RP, BP, blue pill, about life overall. Do you think that it would be a good idea as as a for to... to basically make BP content include things that go beyond just looks, height, and dating? Uh, I mean, it could, but I think that, like, at least 80% of the BP needs to be committed to dating, specifically dating, because that's, like, the main thing. Like, just how crucial your looks are, your height is, as a man, um in dating and how much women care about it like you know like i've I've thought about these other points they're talking about like you know business like in in the workplace your looks have a somewhat of a factor and all stuff like that you know i've thought about all, all of this stuff even the education one you know how we brought up earlier in the stream like do professors give higher grades to better looking students like you know i think that these are side points but I think they should just be kept as side points. And the trying to prove these things is a lot more difficult and the correlation coefficients are going to be inevitably lower with regard to these topics rather than the dating and women caring about look stuff, which we all know has an extremely, extremely high correlation coefficient. Yeah. Um, the the difference between the, the way we see it is that I, I have never thought of the... B pill as just being about looks, looks, looks. So when you read this comment, you were talking about, oh, how, for example, studies have shown that better looking people get promoted more, they, they make more money, and, you know, they, they might get higher grades as well. That's not, that's not so much what I was talking about, getting, trying to get to with this comment. All oh, right. What, I was what more, is it referring to? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, just anything that is genetic or environmental, but out of your control, basically. I, oh, I don't okay. narrow down the B pill to just looks. For example, IQ in education, that would be a B pill in, in my view. All oh, right, okay, I'm on the same page as you now. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. And I've actually seen some content creators bring this up. So, you know, they, they don't just see BP as through the lens of looks, looks, looks. They also talk about like, you know, mental disorders that are genetic related as, as also being a part of the BP or as you mentioned, IQ, you know, all of these other genetic factors that go beyond your looks are technically encompassed within the BP. Yeah. Um, do you ever see yourself making content about these or are you just going to focus on looks? <sighs> I'd probably say that I'm just going to focus on looks. Um, I've, we'll I've considered, because, I cons I've considered uh, like branching out on some other topics, such as like your voice, because your voice is mostly genetic, and you know it's not looks related, but it's still a genetic factor that does have an a, a factor on an effect on your dating life. But I think it would, I'm, I'm for the, for the most part, as I said, at least eighty percent of my channel is going to be talking about looks and dating, like trying to tie those two things together. Like, you know, I would love to talk about, um, you know, money and IQ, say, but if I'm going to talk about those, I'd probably talk about them on the second channel more where I, you know, have a broader range of topics, like, you know, in life setup. And that's where I can talk about more other genetic factors, how it relates to other parts of life. But as for the main channel, it's almost strictly looks and dating linking those two things together yeah that, that's that's totally fine because that's your specialty you know and um the reason i'm so i'm such a fan of expanding the b pill beyond just looks is that i think that if you look at like one of my earliest videos i ever made i, I was talking about how if you only focus on just the looks part of the b pill eventually your channel is going to turn into a meat grinder because you just run out of things to say hmm yeah. Do you think your channel in, in that direction? Because I see you just like uh, making 
multiple videos of subscriber face ratings. I'm like, is has this guy run out of ideas or what? That was like quite a long time ago when I did the oh oh no the subscriber face ratings the uni girls ones. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I've got a couple of those, but they're not going to be like you know the future of the channel like going on for ages. But honestly, I think there is some truth to what you're saying, and the way that I've set up my channel is that. I have created evergreen content and evergreen content means that the content never really dies. And what I'd recommend to all 400 people watching here is if you ever think that some of my videos or like the newer ones, you know, is like rehashing or, um, you know, is, is something that you've already heard, blah, 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 blah. Just go watch my old videos. Go watch my old videos. They're some of the best ones that I've got. And you know, they're, they're the most relevant data, some of the best examples, and the videos that are uploaded on my channel from two years ago, they're just as relevant today as they were when they were first uploaded. But the problem is, with most people on YouTube, is they're very stuck in, you know, like, recency and dopamine and just chasing the next dopamine hit. That's why you've got char channels like Darius M, who just have the exact same format, the exact same style of video uploading on a daily basis. And I like Darius M. I think that he's got some, you know, uh, good content on his channel, especially his older stuff. His newer stuff is a lot more repetitive and meat grindery. However, you know, why are people... If you, you know, go on any particular day and um see he's uploaded a new video why does that new video get 100k views on the first day but a video that he has from five years ago which is clearly of a higher quality than the video he's just uploaded will only might get 100 views on that day like why, why is there that disparity when you would anticipate that the high quality video would get more views but it's because as i said people are just so caught up in dopamine and they, they they love the recency and the hit pieces and the news and all of this stuff yeah i see that on youtube a lot with uh channels that you mentioned in your your older stream like man talk manosphere highlights daily yeah man guide daily uploads. they're all called the same yeah. uh they, they, they all sound the same like they all sound like they've been created by the same guy and it's just like different, ever so slightly different branding on all of them. Like man talk, man guide, man wisdom. Like just insert man, but like with with any other word, man improvement. Just just whatever word you can think of, and boom, start man uploading. Talk. Yeah, start start uploading da daily daily uh, TikTok reaction content, and it's an easy way to get fifty thousand uh, guys watch watching you every single day. Right, right, right. Um do we have any other else anything else to talk about on this particular subject or should we move on to the next thing? Uh yeah, that's that's all I have to say about this. But let's move into I want to talk about the importance of personality just briefly because I know that I'm taking a lot a lot of time so I'll just kind of get this over with. Okay. So, should we uh, I'm guessing I'm on the right so pole. To, let me see, let me see actually. Um it's the one that you right, uploaded can you put up on your the two channel. Poles? Okay, so you poles. want the two poles. All right. Okay, so I'll just read them out quickly. So the first one says is asking about your audience's current status. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, no. This is not um not not this one. Sorry, um the one that has two poles and one image. Two poles and one image. Yeah, did you did you receive that? No. Was oh, wait, was, was one, that potentially one, right? the one that I? had to remove um oh no 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 that, that's I sent not you a the one that's been, message. That, that's, no that's not that's not the one it's the other one okay uh there's no image on this slide this is just two poles there's, I, i'm looking at all of these slides i have there's no one with two poles and one image this is this is the one. Oh, this is the one okay i'm on the right one okay okay yeah so the first one asks about your audience's relationship status uh there's three percent who are married 13% in a long-term relationship, 17% says they're single, but spinning plates or playing the field, you know, you know, I'm insinuating there. And then the last one is single and have no options. And then you have 4% of your audiences, either women or didn't want to answer the question. 
And then do you want to yeah, read out the, the second, second poll or do you want to analyze the first one? Um, yeah, I'll read the second poll. Um, which of the following numbers is the closest to your face rating out of 10? So I, so it's kind of this distribution. I, the options go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 10% uh, said 3, 19% said 4, 30% said 5, 23% said 6, and 18% said 7. And the distribution has a slight skew towards above average. Now, the the kind of discrepancy between these two polls is why I want to bring up the maybe um the main one of the, it's a very strong factor in the reason that our community isn't getting dating results. It may not be looks because why do we see it, it would make sense it would make sense to me that it's all about looks if most of the voters of the second poll said that they're sub five, but that's not the case. So what do you think about this? Okay, so what you're saying is that based on the fact that, if I just did a maths on this, 70% of your audience claims to be a five or above, then why are almost 70% of them also celibate? Yes. Okay, I would say, okay, well, well if we just like break the numbers down from the top. So there are... 33%, so one third of your audience who is like having, you know, activity in the dating market at the moment, right? right? So they're either married in a relationship or single and playing the field and they, you know, like have had intimacy recently. So, you know, it, I'm adding up the first three percentages from the top poll, which all adds up to 33%. And now if you look at the bottom poll 18% plus 23% is 41% and that means if you do the difference between the 33% from the first poll and the 41% from the second poll and this is assuming that like you know we're working from the top down here so we'd expect that all of the people that are in the dating market at the moment have activity in the dating market are uh, the most attractive guys, which it not not necessarily would be. There might be a couple people in the second poll who are fives or fours that are in relationships. They'd be rarer, but they would still exist. It's it's not a perfect one to one. So, the if, if but if we assume that it is a perfect one to one, just for now, then it means that there are eight percent of guys who are a six or a seven who are not active in the dating market. Are you following? Uh, yeah, I, th I think I followed yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so why are these 8% of, um, you know, guys in the second poll who are a six? Well, you know, 8% of 23%. So it'd be like, you know, a third of guys who are a six. Why are they not in any one of the three top options from the first poll. I would say it's probably because of a lack of effort. And I would also say that there's some guys who have overrated their attractiveness in the second poll. So they think that they're a six, but they're actually a five. And that's not why they're not getting any um, results. So if you instead asked on the poll, on the second poll, how many matches on Tinder did you get in the last week? Or how many dates on Tinder did you get in the last month? It would, you know, let's say that you had the options as either like um, five plus and like one to four and then zero. Then anyone who got five plus, I would assume is at least a seven. Anyone who got one to four, I would assume is a six. And then anyone who got zero is a five or below. If you did that poll, I guarantee you there will be a lot less people answering five plus or one two four which i believe is the minimum to qualify as a six out of ten now obviously you would have a another option on the poll to say i'm not on tinder and you know blah 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 however um you know i, I think the point still stands if you just think about the people that do answer the active options in that poll there would be way less guys getting dates on tinder than the number of guys saying that there are six or seven in this secondary poll. Yeah. 
Do you know I what I'm saying? That's, that's yeah, like, like I, I'm just going to spell it I, out to the audience because that was like a long-winded explanation. Um, right, it was, but, it but was I'll kind spell of it out. Follow to follow Yeah, I'll, I'll spell it out. If, if you are watching the stream and you're one of these 23% of guys who thinks you're at least a six or, you know, is a six, if you have not got... If you're on Tinder and you have not gotten a date in the last month, you're not a six. That's it. That, that's what I'm saying. So if you're believing that you're at least a six but you've not got a date on tinder for a month despite trying you're not a six that's the that's the end of the story so you can't say that you're a six if you've not gonna gone on the date in tinder on the last month that's that's just how it is because you're clearly not a six oh, no, if, no uh, that's that's what i believe like if, if you put in effort yeah yeah well i oh good go on if, if you've put in effort like i'm not talking about just having tinder idle on your phone i'm talking about having decent photos not you know mirror selfies like you've put in some effort and you're a six out of ten guy if you've not gotten a date in the last month then you're, you're just simply not a six you're something else like and, and my proof of that is i know for a fact that if i was on tinder now i could not just get one date in the next month i could land several dates in the next month and that that proves that i'm a six so anyone who's you know saying that i'm not six just look at the tinder results you can watch you can re-watch my tinder experiment to see i got nine dates in one month so if you if you're one of these guys thinking you're a six or a seven but you've not got on a date despite trying your ass off on tinder and swiping loads and messaging all of these women if you've not got a date in the last month then you're just simply not a six you don't need to get you know you don't need to cry about it but that that's just how it is you you've you've um place yourself in the market it doesn't matter what your own opinion is it matters what the feedback you're getting from the market is it's like you can try and sell your house and believe that you're going to get 400k for it but if the maximum offer that you're getting from uh, by potential buyers is 200k then your house is worth 200k you can say it is worth 400k all you like but the truth is it's is that it's worth 200 because that's what people are offering this is this is uh, your your point is similar to how your your belief that the the best way or, or maybe one of the best ways to find out how attractive you are as a man is to just go out and approach a bunch of women and gauge how they treat you and and I I don't agree with that as how it, come you're ruling out a you're ruling out social skills as a factor and especially it applies it's a lot more important for this community because I um. From uh, the Chris Williamson podcast with Hamza, they brought up a statistic that 40% of the people who use BP forums like uh, Luxmax and uh, the uh, other BP forums, you know, they they said that 40% of them have autism. Okay. So, and, and I think that that's, that's like shocking to me. That's That's so massively high. And knowing that that is a big factor in our community, we can't just rule out game. Okay, yeah, I understand, but I, th I think that my example still is relevant because we know that online dating is 90% looks. So even if you've got some mental condition, such as the one you mentioned, the only reason I'm saying the one you mentioned because I'm not 100% sure if saying the conditions out loud is demonetizable, so I'll play it safe. Um, the reason I think my example still stands is because online dating is... 90% look so even if you are you know one of these people that has the conditions if you're a chad the women aren't going to know until they at least turn up to the date and that's when it's going to be downhill but i do agree with your point that if i had previously stated that you should like approach 100 girls see how they treat you and then see um you know gauge from that what your smv is you know, that, that's not going to be entirely accurate because if you are one of these guys that has these conditions, even if you're like a seven or an eight, you know, you're probably going to get lower results compared to if someone is a seven or eight but didn't have one of those conditions. Right. Yeah, so I think it's dependent um, on the approaching environment, basically. Okay, and um, well, well, speaking of the approaching environment, you can uh, can you show up that the poll where I drew a line over the over your graph? Yep. Okay. So this was taken from one of my videos where I've showed over the last one hundred years how the relevance of blue pill, RP, and BP 
have changed over time. And I made the argument that since things like Tinder, Instagram, and, you know, women entering the workplace and all stuff like this, that looks have become more important. Yes, uh, I, I agree that looks have became, become a lot more important. But where I disagree with you is that I think personality has become relatively more important as well, not less important. Really? That's and, surprising. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, the reason I believe this, it's... It, it, um, there, there are quite a few. I'm going to try to condense this as much as I can. Um, so back, back in the day, there were more um, like arranged marriages and like fa the approval of your family or your community played like a much bigger role in marriage. And in, in like, I've heard that in some places that the, the, the culture was such that marriage was not seen as like a love-based thing. It was seen as like a practical um, utility based like tool to to raise children and the, the people didn't actually have to even click with each other so um, I think back then it was uh, in the past it, it was money and status played uh, uh, like a huge huge role and like personality is less important relatively than it is than it was today okay and back then but furthermore there was also um, less diversity in society because people weren't immigrating and stuff. So there was less diversity of cultures, less diversity of different values because there was no internet and people who grew up in the same town, they all had the same like values and everything. There was less diversity of masculinity because you didn't have soy boys. Every guy was like an alpha, would be an alpha today. And because there was no internet, everyone basically had the same level of social skills. And and today, the, it, it's very different because the divide, the, the gap between the people who have good social skills and the people who don't is getting wider and wider. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're talking about. So, I, so to like put more numbers on it, what you're saying is that at the very left-hand side of the chart, you know, back in like the very, very traditional times, you know, arranged marriages, stuff like that, um the black and blue line would essentially be at zero and then the red line would more or less be at 100 and if you include status in that as well All right it wouldn't essentially be at 100 i think that it would be maybe at like 70 60 okay yeah um but then as for today um how how would those numbers look up because you, at the moment you know given given the new line that you've drawn on you're you're over 100% um so yeah, yeah. So, but I'm just assuming that you can, like, for illustrative purposes. But I just you would just basically like move the looks and the money down a little bit, like more so the money, just kind of like just squash the rest down a bit. Okay, yeah, I understand. But um, I think I think this kind of relates to your pie chart video, like the pie chart fallacy video, that today um, looks and personality they are more important, but that doesn't necessarily that like the relativism the relativism has followed the same because i would the way that i would change this chart is that i would say in, in the last 20 years although i agree based on your argument that personality's importance has increased it's increased at a slower rate than what looks has so because of that yeah, like I've if we take out the red line of the equation for a second if we had a chart that was just looks and just personality both of the lines but both of the factors can become more relevant in terms of importance in, in the last 20 years. So women now have high demands for looks and they have high demands for personality. However, on, on a chart that's relative like this, where you're ranking them from zero to 100, the blue line can still go down because if looks is increasing at a faster rate than personality, which it has done in the last 20 years because Tinder and things like that have completely changed the game, then it means that on a relative basis, the importance of personality can appear to go down. However, its overall importance can still be increasing, but you, you don't necessarily see that. All right, yeah, yeah, I, I get your argument. So the, per the relative can still go down, even though the absolute would still go up. And yeah, I, exactly. I didn't think of that when I was making it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I, so I based on what we've established it would make sense that personality still has to go down. It has to, because looks has gone up way more than personality has. However, that, does, does, that doesn't mean that personality has gone down, as, as you said, an absolute, but it has relatively. 
Okay, yeah, I, I, I agree with that take. All right. Um, is there anything else that we want to oh, talk about on this okay, slide? Just or? Like, uh, to, to like finish up the personality topic, I want you to show your poll about what ended your sub your subscribers' relationships. Oh yeah, this one, this one. Yeah. So although I I, I agree with the BP that looks is like the the number one most important factor for getting your foot in the door and how many options you're going to have. Um, that if you don't that personality and like non looks traits can definitely be a deal breaker in in a long term relationship and it, it's the most like it's the most common reason that it actually ended um according to your this uh, poll yeah I, I understand this argument and this actually like you know on the surface this significantly debunks the RP because if people say like oh money is so important bro then how come so few people have actually broken up out of money only three percent um however i don't think that this carries across into the bp department um so what it sounds like the argument you're trying to make is or i don't necessarily know if you believe this but a blue pillar would look at this data and say like hey look um you know 37 percent of relationships had failed or actually even more than that because if you take away this data it's even higher so most relationships fail because of arguments, which we would attribute to personalities, therefore blue pill. And if we assume, like, you know, this wouldn't necessarily be true, but if we assume, like, you know, she cheated is the BP answer that a, a woman seeked out a higher mate, um, you know, a, a better looking option or something like that, she monkey branched to a chad. If we assume that this is all a BP answer, it's only 11%. Therefore, a blue pillar would try to make the statement that in a relationship, blue pill is more relevant because more people are splitting up out of a blue pill reason rather than a BP reason and significantly more than a RP reason. Are you following? Yes. Yes, but the, re the reason I still don't think this argument holds, like there is some merit to it. And I do want to say that, of course, in a relationship, BP does go up in terms of relevance compared to the initial stage. However, that doesn't mean that the BP is neglected altogether because the amount of arguments and issues in relationships, you wouldn't believe that occur because of a BP reason is so astronomically high. Like if you, you know, look at any relationship where they got a dead bedroom and, you know, you see these like Reddit stories where a woman's like, or I, I don't actually find my uh, husband physically attractive anymore, or I never did, and I, I just married him, um, you know, b because I like it, it was just like seemed like the right person or the right thing to do, you know, th that's probably going to lead to arguments in in the relationship or marriage, um, but it still has a, its roots grounded in a BP reason. Like, trust me, the amount of arguments and falling outs that happen because of a BP reason, or even, like, um, the guy looking at a hotter girl for too long, or the woman flirting with the chad at the bar and the husband getting upset with it. Like, th these are all BP reasons. However, they're not shown in this data. Like, the, the argument is the end, but it's not shown the start. And the start, I would argue, is more important than the end. Yeah, that, that 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 is a fair argument. And um, uh, speaking of BP reasons that result in arguments and falling out, I think that um, it can it can occur in another way in in how some people in the BP community have such a like desperately strategic method and approach of, of attracting women that they would be willing to lie about their beliefs and try to put on a, a mask and act like they have some game that they don't. And then, you know, just to, to to up their chances. But being that strategic would be more likely to result in the relationship falling apart like that. So el elaborate on that a little bit more. Well, I'm, I'm talking about how when guys are really desperate because they're not getting any results and they're willing to like sacrifice their honesty and authenticity. So they don't like show their true selves and eventually like in later in the relationship that like slips out and it makes it unsustainable oh, okay yeah yeah I, I think i'm following a little bit more so if we like try to make this a 
a little bit more tangible. Are you talking about like a higher value guy, like a Chad, who will like lead a woman on, string her along in a situation ship, like because the woman's like a five out of ten, and he knows that he could eventually do better, but he just hasn't fi- found the eight out of ten woman yet. And, you know, but for now, he, he keeps that 5 out of 10 woman around uh, just, just for some easy, fun times. Is, is that what you're, what you're referring to? Uh, no, that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about more like an average guy who, well, he's not a Chad, so his personality can still make a, make a be like the deal breaker there. So he's basically like strategically putting forth, uh, acting as if he, he is someone that he isn't, or, he, or he's like lying about uh, things. Oh, cause, right. Um, Okay. Yeah, yeah, because like a lot of this is where where the community, our community, differs from the blue pill. That a lot of guys in our like comment section have this very like strategic kind of like pragmatic approach. Like, how do I maximize my chances? Whereas the blue pill says just be yourself. But here's the thing: you kind of need to be yourself if you want the relationship to actually be sustainable. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I understand what you're talking about now. So, guys who, um early in a relationship pretend to like you know show signs that they are higher value than they actually are so for example they um say that they like own the ferrari but in reality they just rent it and uh, they say that they own the place they live but in reality they just rent it um you know this is all nice and great in the early stages and they might be able to get a relationship with a woman but let's say that they've been together for a couple years and she finds out that the guy is actually broke as hell and he actually went into debt to finance all of this stuff then that's gonna you know result in the relationship eventually coming to an end is that is that a tangible example to what you've been describing Yes, that that's kind of a that's a bit of an extreme example. Lying that you own a car that you don't have. It's more like, um, maybe like pretending to be like a party guy when you're actually an introvert or something. I, I don't know. Mm. Um, something more like more like that. Not as tangible and like obvious as saying I own this mansion. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I th- I think there is like an element of truth to what you're saying. I don't think it's like a massively it's significant. Kind of like pretending. Go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to oh, say, no, like, I don't I think it's like a massive, about... massively significant point, but, um, you know, if it, I, I think there's still, like, some truth to it. Yeah, per- uh, I was also referring to pretending to have values that you don't, and you also said that you would do this yourself in on, on your Honest Waffles channel. You said that on a first date with a woman, if a woman is talking about, like, oh, feminism and stuff that you don't agree with, you're just kind of go- going to play along with it because it makes you more agreeable. Oh no, no way! I would do that. I don't know where I said that in an honest waffles video. I- I'd love you to send oh, no, the link to that the, afterwards. It was in the one. It was in the one where you talked about like the the dark trick about how to figure out a woman's true body count. Oh right. Oh yeah, but that's different. Um, no, that th- that's not what I said. It's actually very different to the example that you gave. So what I said about in that video is that you essentially want to be very unreactive to a woman in the early stages of dating. And, like, if, if you are, you know, present yourself as an open book and an open mind, then she'd be happy to fill in those pages and, you know, t- tell her life story and, you know, tell, and like, sp- spill out any red flags, potential red flags that she has. Uh, because, you know, she trusts you because you, you've, like, given the face of being an open book. Um, so you're not, you're not, like, deluding her to say, like, you agree with all of the crazy opinion she might have um what i'm saying is that you just be unreactive and unresponsive and you you never like answer any of her questions um you you just say like oh i haven't thought about that blah 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 so you don't give an opinion and you allow her to say all of the information you need to know and if it's red flag information then then you stop dating her or if it's good information and she says the answers that you do want to hear then that is when you know, okay, um, you know, this woman actually might be long-term potential. That's what I was saying um, in that video. Okay, okay. Yeah, I might, uh, so I did, um, like, misinterpret your point there. Fair enough, okay. Uh, we all right to move so on to the next point? Um, or do you have uh, anything else? Yeah, uh, just, just, 
yeah, I, I do want to move on, but I'm going to ask you, um, you, you don't have to answer this because it's kind of a personal question, but do the women whom you date know how you make a living? Yeah, of course. Well, I, I'm in a relationship at the moment and she knows how, um, you know, that, that I that I do this, that I do YouTube. Yeah, but it's just, that's, that's what shocks me so much because I don't know how, um, maybe it's because you're above average in looks, you know, I'm not, I'm sub five, but I don't see how I can meet a woman who would be okay with me kind of like engaging in this kind of content. Like it, this, as you, as everyone knows, like this kind of, these kinds of beliefs are associated with like a lot of negativity and that's like a deal breaker to a lot of women. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I understand. Um, what I've often said is like, well, this is the thing. I think that like my actual content is quite tame and it's not extreme. And a lot of people would, you know, think that the content actually has, makes a lot of sense. Um, and you know, it does, it is like coming, from a perspective of trying to find out reality and help guys. But I agree that on the surface, like if you just go onto my channel and you like start looking at the thumbnails, yeah, you, you're going to be like, oh, what the hell is this stuff? Like this just looks like some extreme uh, person who, you know, is really bitter and outraged, blah, 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 pandering to upset, depressed guys who are finding difficulty in dating. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the truth, but if I explain to the person I'm talking to that, like, the thumbnails are just, like, clickbait and, you know, just, just trying to, like, get people in, but once you actually sit and watch the video, it does make a lot of sense, then, you know, that that's usually, like, been my out of, of how I've explained it to some people. Yeah, um, the thing is, though, um... I feel like just in my experience, people aren't even going to give me the time of day for me to explain like that. Because if this is why I never talk about BP in real life, because if I did, I feel like that would just like instantly make me seem like a very weird, like kind of basement dwelly person. And, and I, am, I wouldn't even take that chance. Like I, if I explained, I wouldn't get the, the chance to even explain like the, the nuance. Yeah, some people are like that. Some people are, you know, very close-minded. But I don't want to associate myself with close-minded people like that anyway. Like, you know, if, if some... It, the, the filtration is very effective. So if somebody, you know, ends up disagreeing with me and doesn't give me the time of day, then I don't want that person in my life anyway. But if somebody does hear me out and they do have an open mind, then that's the kind of person that I would want to have in my life. Because, you know, they... Because they, most people haven't learn about this stuff and it almost comes back to the thing that I was talking about at the very beginning that when I first learned about the BP I didn't get bitter or depressed or upset by it I just accepted that as the factual truths and I looked back on all of my previous rejection experiences and stuff through like oh they are explained by the BP like, I, I don't know why some people get upset and bitter by it you know maybe maybe because they've taken the blue pill to a level of extremity and they you know get upset by hearing something that isn't you know that the world isn't all roses and daisies and covered in peaches and cushions you know if you tr i don't want those people in my life anyway yeah i see what you mean and, and a lot of people say that but the bp part of it is that you don't directly choose what you believe and you 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 have to be genuinely convinced of something to believe it so because you and I both believe this thing that the mainstream disagrees with. That makes our social lives harder because we want only to associate with people who actually are like genuinely interested and aren't going to be so close minded. Right. But the more like deviant your belief is from the mainstream, the, the smaller that pool of people will be. Yeah. Yeah. And, sure. and that's why I, I would, honestly, I would rather be blue pilled because that would mean that I would be able to be honest with in real life socially and with women and i wouldn't have to worry about people judging me negatively because of my beliefs like it's so much easier to, it's so much smoother to be blue pilled hmm well what i've noticed is that people most people are bp'd but they just won't ever say it out loud but if they were slapped in the face or confronted with some scenario um you know which which is clear evidence of the bp then that's when 
you know, you, the, the the real truth comes out. So everyone likes to say that they're blue pilled, but in reality, they are BP'd. And there's like clear evidence. Like this doesn't happen, but I could predict what would happen if someone like this did do this. So I was running this morning and there was like this really old guy. And then there was like these, these like group of um, young, attractive girls. And I just thought for a second, if that old guy who was like a clear sub five went over to any one of those girls, even if, you know, uh, one of the girls was on her own and started trying to hit on her, then, you know, the the girl was probably going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you know, you're, 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 you're like way older than me. You're out of my age range. Or if she doesn't say that to his face, she's 100% going to tell it to her friends later on that this guy who's not even close to her age range is trying to hit on her. And that's clear evidence of the age pill, which is part of the BP. And, you know, if you contrast that to someone who was in her age range and, you know, reasonably attractive, then it wouldn't be met with the same response. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, that that's clear evidence that people yeah. in their actions would be BP, but in their words they would say something different yeah i see your point yeah okay um we all right to move on to the next topic yeah i'm all right um is now, it, now is it the videos now, is it? This... yeah the videos right okay right so let me bring it up here it is do you want me to, do you want me to provide some background before before we play them okay go ahead i've got the uh the looks versus confidence one first Okay, yeah. The one so it's doing about, a reaction to my video. I mean, right. It's about um, these are examples of kind of the the really important and a really important mindset difference between RP and BP because BP people have this truth centric mindset where um, it is all about this is true, this is how it is, and you need to believe it no matter like what the outcome would be. And then RP says, "Hey, the truth." actually isn't that important it's not a, it's more important that what you believe gets you the outcome that you want even if it may not be true so can you play these examples now please okay to me game is the idea that i can show somebody through my actions through my beliefs that when push people push on me i'm still concrete in the idea that i'm a high value individual that i believe i'm worthy of things i'm worthy of the girl more than worthy i'm actually out of her league i believe that i am a 12 out of 10. i believe i'm the best possible option for any girl the same way that if it came down to money you should believe that you're worthy of all the money in the world some people might think this is narcissistic but here's the idea even though something might not be true if believing it is going to make your life a lot better and going to get you the outcome you want you should believe it Hello, the same uh, way that it? Yeah, I, I I played it. So the guy, um, I, I go ahead. Couldn't hear it on the stream. Sorry, you couldn't hear it on the stream. You should have been able to hear it on the stream yeah. because it's. I I couldn't. Oh right right yeah yeah my bad I I didn't know that I had a muted. Okay yeah, got it now. Yeah um it, it definitely played on the stream so because it. it's it's been coming through I the agree. same audio channel as your microphone has been coming through. So the people were definitely able to hear it. So you know just to jig your memory as well and summarize what he said. He's like saying, even if he approaches a girl out of his league, he comes into it with this deluded mindset that he's actually on her level, if not above her. And, you know, he's this like giga Chad high value guy. Yeah. Did he, did you play the the part where he said, even if that may not be true, yes. you should still believe yes, it, it helps you? Yeah. So, so that's the main point of his argument. What do you think about that as no, a general it's principle? Pure delusion. It's pure delusion. Like, you know, a a guy can uh, apply for Apple even though he's not got the credentials or qualifications. It's not going to make a difference. He's not going to get the job. So what's the point? It's just delusion maxing. If if it doesn't affect the outcome, then what's what's the point? You've got to have the credentials to back it up. And if you're some 4 out of 10 guy who's short, you can try to approach the 8 out of 10 Stacy, thinking like, oh, I'm definitely a giga chad on her level. It's not going to make any difference because she's still going to reject you anyway. And the fact that your perception is so far removed from the reality of your actual value, you just come off as some arrogant, delusional guy. So it's a terrible, terrible strategy. Like At least have, a, uh, have your reality be in alignment with your perception. As someone just said in the comments, delusion maxing. That's exactly how it is. It's it's just delusion maxing. 
Oh, speaking of delusion, can you play the the other two? I'm gonna um, before I tell you like my thoughts about all this. Um, just play play the other two because the second one, the one by Ricky Benang, that he directly addresses delusion, and he says delusion can actually go a long way, which I find funny. Okay, so this is the bald guy, the the first man look alike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I would say that sometimes a little delusion can go a long way. Like first man at all. Let's take the example. Okay. Just just don't talk for the next twenty seconds because your mic is. Um, like over speaking the um, guy so I'm playing the clip right now so don't talk for the next 20 seconds a good thing either in fact I would say that sometimes a little delusion can go a long way in life let's take the example of the bull and the matador you throw a matador into a bull ring he knows the reality he knows that he's got nothing but a red cloth and he's standing in front of a thousand pound bull who is ready to tear him apart at the first sign of contact. That's the reality of the situation, but this is where the delusion kicks in in a good way because he's got that bit of delusion to say, hey, maybe I can avoid it. Maybe I can overcome the bull. And that actually allows him to overcome that dangerous situation. Maybe that's- a Okay, uh, I've just watched it. He, he gives like the bull analogy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't um, think this. Play, I don't think this example is at all tangible to dating in real life. Like yeah, a bull, I think, I think it's a pretty terrible. Example it is because a bull is ten yeah. IQ, and you know a human can outsmart a bull, but a woman is not the same. Like, does he think that he's going to be able to go up to a woman, and you know, oh, if she's stupid maxed, then I would be able to delude her into believing that I'm actually a eight out of ten giga chad. Like, women aren't stupid. This is a simple debunk of the argument that a woman's going to have the intelligence to know that you actually are some 4 out of 10 guy approaching her and she's an 8 out of 10 woman and you, you, you don't have any right to approach her because she's way above your level. And this is the last one. So that that's why I don't believe in what you're saying because... It's how people believe in themselves. That's why people have done great things. So I don't believe in realism. I don't think it's a good thing to, to say to other people. I think people should be optimistic for their future because you can make a great life for yourself and I don't want anyone believing that they can't no matter what their circumstances are. I just don't think it serves you. Was, was that the right part that you wanted me to play? Yeah, the part where he says that he doesn't believe in realism. Okay, yeah. And he yeah, believes yeah. in optimism. He believes in optimism. Okay, yeah. Nice. Um... Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I think they're all, like, saying essentially the same thing. It's just basically delusion maxing, which is, is a terrible, terrible strategy. It doesn't work, not in any department of, of you know, your life. Like, okay, fair enough, if you're, like, 5% delusion maxed, it can work in your favour, but at least your perception is, a t is you know reasonably close to your reality so if you fake it till you make it like if, if you lie on your resume five percent you might still be able to get your foot in the door and then once you get the interview oh then you might be able to claw it back and improve um you know it, actually get the job because you um delusion maxed in in the initial resume stage so it can work if you do it you know to a, a small degree but not what any of these guys are saying like these guys are taking it to another extreme they're just saying like you should have you might as well have no value but as long as you just believe you have value you can be as like incredibly delusional and that's all that matters which which i just think is a terrible terrible argument yeah i, I definitely think in in many cases like in the examples you brought up where you're like a a five foot two balding guy and approaches Stacy, you're not gonna delude her into thinking you're a giga chat. Like that just won't happen. Yeah, but, but um, like if you're if you're about, a seven maybe. Okay. If you're a seven and you're six foot, like, you know, you might be able to get away with it. Like th just think about online dating apps for a second. How many guys who are five eleven say that they're six foot? So many. And how many guys have got on a date with a woman because they've put six foot in their bio, even though they're five eleven? And they've gotten away with it. They've got that first date and then they've ended up like having an opportunity with that girl, potentially even going on to date her. That's because they've delusion maxed, but by one inch. One inch of delusion maxing is okay. And they have got their foot in the door and they've used that to get the date with the woman. And now they can show more value on the date and it can compensate enough that the one inch 
that the delusion max on their profile doesn't doesn't make a difference. But if some guy was five foot five and delusion max is seven inches on his bio, says he's six foot, that, that's never going to work. And the woman's going to walk straight out. It's, it's going to be crazy. Right, and I, I definitely agree with that. But by by delusion maxing, I'm not referring to lying. But it's about the belief of what you can achieve. It's the belief of what you can achieve, but it yeah, doesn't the, change reality. You, like you, that, you can believe that you're six foot. You can believe you're six foot as a five foot five guy, but reality is reality. Like at the end of the day, these beliefs are just beliefs. It's, it's always yeah, going to be different from reality. Your, it, it doesn't change the reality, but or I, I think that you are seeing that you're very uh, uh, like advantaged mentally because you as you said you've never gotten depressed or felt unmotivated after hearing about the bp um that you're like in the top 10 percent of work ethic um so w what about some guy who may not be as logical as as you maybe some guy who's more emotional and his motivation is like really like wishy-washy he might need to have that optimism to get him out of bed and to do the work like his, it won't change his reality, but it it will change his actions. What? Why does a person need to delusion max themselves to do work? Why? Why don't you just do the work and in the first place? Like you, you don't need to have. To... Is... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh well, I, I was just going to jump in and say it's because their brains aren't as like are not as logical as yours. They can't do everything that they think they should do. Well, I think that they that that's not a good frame of mind to have. Um, I, I don't think this emotional thinking is is, is good. You you need, you need to rely on logic and look through life in an objective lens and what's actually going to get you the results. Because once you practice this line of thinking, you're going to do the things that are going to bring a tangible benefit to your life. And the work is worth the rewards if you have an emotional thing and you work based on emotion then you're either gonna do the wrong things or you're gonna wake up one day and not want to go do the things that you've set out to do because your feelings aren't there like you should always rely on logic and things like discipline which means that you you know like just like hamza says at the end of his videos do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it blah 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 and, you know, as much as I don't necessarily think that that phrase applies to the bottom 10% of men, genetically speaking, like in, in a dating sense, it, it does apply to a lot of guys who are at least average and they should adhere to that phrase. Like, uh, I'll repeat what I said earlier in the stream that the RP does absolutely apply to the middle 50% of men. It applies to normies and they can increase their results and in, in, if you're one of those guys, then you absolutely should listen to what Hamza's catchphrase is, his slogan, do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Yeah, I, I agree with that in theory, but I think that in practice, just because you tell people do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it, I think that like 90% of people just don't have the willpower to do that. And it's more effective to kind of dangle the carrot on the stick and make and delude them into thinking the rewards actually way bigger than it is because that's going to give them so much more motivation no I, I disagree i disagree because what i actually think happens is that if, if you oversell somebody the dream that they're going to get some crazy results once they start and they're not getting the results that they've been promised then they actually quit early and you see this in um you know, I'll have to like do research the actual studies after the stream, but the you see it a lot in the fit fitness industry that you get like fitness gurus who are like, oh, you can lose thirty pounds in six weeks, bro. You know, it's it's it's, it's like the miracle diet plan, the miracle exercise plan. It's going to be easy, and when the person enrolls in the program, if they reach the first week and they've barely made a dent then they're going to quit and they're back to square one again i think selling people realism from the beginning is going to be a lot better for the person because once they start whatever program or you know results that they're trying to achieve 
they're going to have the motivation to continue moving forward because their results are in alignment with their expectations. Well, uh, going with what a lot of RP YouTubers say, those results may not come until years down the line. Do you agree that agree with that? Honestly, no. Like I think realistically, it, you, dating as a man, it comes down to the 80-20 rule. Like 80% of your value can be fixed in 20% of the time. Like if you want to get a date in the next month and you're at least like an average guy, then just looks max like crazy. Do, do everything, all of the easy stuff, the low-hanging fruit to increase your value by as short amount of time as possible. Like, you're not going to become a millionaire in a month. It's just not going to happen. So if you was going to try to get a date in the next month and you're at least average, then you would lux max to the best of your ability. Like, it, maximize all of the short-term characteristics that you can and then get on all of the dating apps Hire a photographer for one day if you need to. Get some really solid photos. Spend the day doing that. And then get on all of the dating apps. Swipe and message like crazy. Cold approach women like crazy. And it, it should work out. But that's not like a long-term, you know, solution. It, it's, it's, it's like quite short-sighted. So, you know, th these RP guys who say like, oh, just, just focus on yourself, bro, for like three years and you know, don't worry about not having any results. Like, I don't think that that's a good solution either. I, I would rather prescribe a man who was at least average to, like, at least get a taste of what's to come by giving him one, like, result. Like, you know, showing that getting a date with a woman is possible in, in a short period if you wanted to. But, like, once you get him on that path, that's when I would start thinking about all of the long-term and preservation factors like there's even guys who are listing to them in the comments now like you know uh skincare you know that that's more like a, a long-term thing it's not going to get you results tomorrow but it's going to absolutely help two years three years down the line or even longer than that yeah um now i want i want to to talk talk about locus of control because um s studies have shown that People who have an internal locus of control um, tend to be much successful and happy, much more successful and happier when other factors are accounted for. But the harsh reality is that there are a lot of factors outside of our control, such as our genetics, that do hold us back. But it seems to be that the more internal your locus of control is, the more successful and the happier you are. So, what do you think about that? Okay, but how about the? I, I would assume that the bell curve the failures are worse for the ones with who believe the uh, internal locus of control. Because think about it this way, like, if, you know, there's um, some singers, and you've got singers who believe that they haven't got enough talent, and they believe in an external locus of control, such as genetics, and they're never going to make it big time. Now, because they believe that, they never make the big move, and they never become a professional singer. However, they have saved a boatload of time and effort and energy because they've not pursued a career in singing that they never had the talent for in the first place. And if you compare this to like the boat of people who do believe in an internal locus of control, then 95% of them are never going to make it. And they can believe all they want that they're eventually going to become a big singer, but 95% of them won't make it. Now, obviously, the 5% who do have the natural talent do end up making it, but most of them don't. So I would say that the bell curve of people that believe in an internal locus of control is broader because the successes, obviously, you know, they're, they're like to the very far right of the curve and they're, they're the winners, but the far left of the curve they're like the biggest losers because not only have they not made it but they've also wasted a load of time and effort in the process hello yes i i, I yeah, yeah i see i see your point it's it's um there's always an opportunity cost right yeah yeah exactly so if, if you believe in an external locus of control like let's let's say if you're some like sub four guy like you're, you're genuinely um a proper sub five, you're five foot five and there's nothing you can do. Then I would say that the learning the BP is would be very beneficial to his life because he would learn that 
dating would be a complete waste of time. There's no point in him putting in the effort. He's better off focusing on other things that make him happy. Whereas if somebody who is that same sub four guy who's five foot five, if he has the internal locus of control and believes in what these delusion maxes are saying, then chances are he's going to be in an even worse position than the guy who just called it quits because he's going to waste a bunch of time, probably a lot of money as well, and you know potentially like enroll in these guys' uh, scams and courses, whatever. And he's probably also going to eventually get burned in the dating market if something ever does materialize. Because let's say he gets married to a woman who doesn't actually find him attractive and he's been beta boxed and he doesn't realize it, then that's probably going to end up up in a divorce and it's going to screw him over later down the line. So him believing in this delusion, it's just kicked the can down the road for him. And he'd be better off just... Um, focusing on other areas of life that make him happy instead. That, that's my point. Yeah. So, um, do you? I, I just want to figure out, like, what do you see as as like a kind of a realistic ideal outcome in the ma- at the macro scale? Um, is it like an okay state of the world for, let's say, only half the male population to date or to to have wives? Say say that part again. It, to let's say that only half the male population has has wives. Is that like an okay outcome in in your view? Well, that's that's how it was for most of human history, wasn't it? That um, all women reproduced and only half of men reproduced. That's how it was throughout all of human history for like a hundred thousand years. Yeah, I, I I see where you're coming from, but I think that because you say a lot of um. Like, the guy is saving himself the trouble of being in that beta bucks relationship. He might as well focus on other things in his life. It seems like it's you you see it as a satisfactory outcome for, like, the bottom, let's say, 30% of men to just not pursue dating because the results just aren't going to be worth it. Is that is that your view? Yes, it is. I'll, I'll tell anyone watching right now, if I, wo- if I woke up tomorrow and I was, like, a sub-four guy, like, genuinely a sub-four then I would just focus on other things that make me happy. Like I, I wouldn't even bother um, trying to pursue women because I know that at, at best they'll just see me as some beta box. They'll, they'll just use me for my money. So what's the point? Like I, I've spoken to some people who are in that position and they say like you know still in order to get their desires met and you know satiate their desires, they uh, sometimes pay to play that that's like a possibility but you know if you're in that position and women see you as so unattractive then what's the point of trying to go the uh natural way like i I just don't see the point of that well my view about this may be i I think there's i'm gonna get a lot of pushback for this but i think that our society focuses too they, they put too much emphasis on love and i think that it we it should be more like it should be more mainstream for people to get together and decide to partner up and build a life together even if love may not be involved because the thing is like would you agree that the vast majority of men in human history were beta boxers that might be so that might be so because you know based on the fact that women weren't as involved in the workplace in in those times you know society was very much geared towards raising families and you know carrying on the next generation there was a lot more traditional values like that then it is very possible it is very possible but that's just not the circumstance today right and can you um just to to go off of that can you bring up the the political graph the political graph so this shows yeah this is quite interesting so it shows the political beliefs of 12th graders and the the girls and boys is pretty much mirrors each other. So women has shot up high for liberals or leftists if you're watching this in the UK, uh, whereas for the boys, they've gone down in liberals and shot up for conservatives in recent years, which I, I think is like very surprising. But I'm, 
I think that makes sense to be honest because most women that I know in and around my age, most of them are so left wing. They're so left wing. And most guys, well, not most guys, but a lot of guys my age, I see them preaching a lot more right wing values. Yeah, build, building upon what you said, um, that's one of the reasons I, I find it more difficult to find a woman who is going to tolerate my my like BP slash RP viewpoints, you know, because it's getting rarer and rarer for the types of men who are in our community to be, to find women who have women around their age who have the same like compatible values, and that's a factor that makes people struggle in dating. That I don't think. Uh, the manosphere like talks about enough I don't know yeah I, I kind of I mean, see I, why that would be your hypothesis it, but, but I would disagree with that slightly because I, I would take the chart with a grain of salt especially, especially the left chart um, where like the women you know most women are liberals because most young girls um, that identify as a left wing like I, I don't think they actually believe that well they might say they do but what I think is more the case is that they've just seen a bunch of TikToks and they've jumped on the bandwagon. They're sheeple, not people. And they're just like regurgitating what they've heard on TikTok. Like how many of them have actually given the critical court, critical, critical thought on these subjects and, you know, come to their own conclusions on these political beliefs and, and these very, very core values? Because I think that a lot of these people if and, and this is why you see most people become more conservative as they grow older because i think most people start out just by learning all of these catchphrases and slogans and you know this that and the other and they start off left wing but that's because they've not thought about it but then as they go grow older and they think about it a little bit more that's when they start to lean more right do you know what i'm talking about yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think that plays some role, but I think the the bulk of it is just that the uh, the right wing views of today were the left wing views like t- twenty years ago. You know they, that people just stay stuck in their ways when society progresses past them. There is some um, argument to be made for that. I I think it's I, I think there isn't there definitely is an element of truth to what you've just said there, but um, it's it's not the most important factor i do believe that people do become more right wing as they get older especially economically like i think that your point is more true with regard to social aspects of politics which is still jumbled in the left right spectrum so for example um you know the like women were able to vote uh a hundred years ago is like the gay rights of today or um you know, women's um, right to be in the workplace 50 years ago. So those social issues, like, they usually do stay in place as people get older and um, people, you know, aren't shifting more right on those subjects. Like, the the spectrum is what shifts, not people's opinions. However, economically, I do believe that people become more right-wing as they get older. So they are more likely to protect property rights, uh, lower taxation... And you know th- things along those lines, like yeah, self, self, there, self-sufficiency. People, yeah, when they get older, they have uh, they gain more wealth and they want to keep that. But when they're young and broke, you know, they just want to have more for themselves. Yeah, yeah, um, there, there, there is an element of that think, as well. Yeah, the social aspect though is like the most important for long-term relationships because if you're a conservative man who's watching these like rp bp videos and you're you get with a liberal woman your your values just aren't going to be compatible and yeah you might have the looks and that might take you so far but when it comes to raising your children like you're going to run into huge roadblocks there really that's that's interesting because i would say a person's economic values are more relevant than a person's social values because like in a relationship like if if a woman's say um left economically then that's going to cause all sorts of problems if um you know in terms of like the finances of a relationship because you come from two completely different points of view of how like finances should be split up 
And let's say that you come from a wealthier background or if you have a higher paying job, then she would essentially want to confiscate your wealth and distribute it to herself because she believes that she's in a worse financial position. So, so I would say that economically, politics is more relevant for the values, at least for relationship building. I, I think that social politics can be negotiated a little bit more. No, I think I think the how you split your money in the relationship is social. It is it is because if you have a socially conservative view of like intergender dynamics, then as a man you're going to be more willing to pay for the date for you know and to to have that traditional like where you make the money, you're the breadwinner and the woman doesn't work, stays home with the kids. But if you have like the socially progressive view, then it's it's going to be the opposite. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I I think that's kind of like an you know, intertwined uh, the point that you just mentioned there about gender roles with regard to, um, you know, work, because I think that's kind of a crossover of social and economic. Um, like, I, I'm more referring to, like, I, I don't think that a man's opinion on, say, gay marriage or the legalization of marijuana, if, if that differs to his partners, is, is going to be a significant issue in the relationship. Like, you know, I, I think that can be overcome significantly more rather than a fundamental disagreement of how finances should be split up in a relationship. Like, you know, say who pays rent. Like, that, yeah, I, I, I say I that, that that crops up a lot more than, you know, someone's opinion on the legalization of marijuana. Like, if, if one person believes one way and the other person believes another way, how would that actually affect the relationship? Yeah, um, it, it's like things like the marijuana legalization, you know, like drug laws, crime laws. I don't think that's going to play much of a role, but I'm st- still on on this point. I I think that it's only going to get worse for men who are. It, it's only going to get worse for men in, for future generations of men because as it gets harder in the dating market, as looks become more more cutthroat, more men are going to come to channels like ours and channels like Fresh and Fit. They're going and, and therefore they're going to believe more of these like socially like gender role conservative views. And at the same time, women are going to be more and more liberal. And it's going to be so much more difficult for these struggling men to find women that they're actually compatible with. And like the divorce rate and, and like arguments and falling out, it's just going to get it's just going to skyrocket. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. I haven't thought about that a huge amount. So I'll have to reflect on that a little bit more after the stream. Maybe I can discuss it more in a future topic, uh, a future stream or future um, video on the second channel. But I, I think we've spoken a lot about this particularly particular subject. So are we all right to move on to the next one? Yeah, I'm ready to move on. We can go back to the uh, truth versus consequences. Can you bring up the, the, the Pascal's wager slide? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I like the look of this slide. I think this one looks quite interesting. And I did have a chance to read it before the stream. Um, I, I disagree with it um, for for a couple of reasons. So so basically what it seems, I don't know if you're playing like dev, devil's advocate in this uh, slide or if this is actually what you believe, but I'll explain it anyway. So um, if, if you're playing devil's advocate, it's, it's saying that it's better to be delusion maxed and not believe in the BP because if you have hope and in reality you do have potential in the dating market then it means that you have succeeded and you're gonna be successful dating wise however if you end up not making it then it means that you've got a small loss and I think that will be entailed in like rejection so you just uh, get rejected a thousand times whereas if you uh, have no hope and you believe in the BP if you make the false identification that you don't actually have any hope but in reality you would have had potential to find a relationship then that means that you've missed up big time because you've given up in the dating market when you shouldn't have and lastly if you have no hope and you aren't able to in, you, you successfully identify yourself as not being worthwhile to pursue dating as a path of happiness, then that means that you've made the correct decision and you're not wasting any time trying to chase women. Is that a good summary of how it is? 
Yes, that's a good summary of how it is. And just okay. like as a side note, I'm not I'm not making like a religious argument here because some people in, in the comments, they might be like, oh, well, Pascal's wager is flawed. Well, uh, I'm not. I'm just using that as an analogy, because if you're familiar with that, then um, it's like the same kind of chart. It's the same kind of logic, the yeah, punishment versus reward. Yeah, I, I think I think it is flawed, though, because um, you're going to have a like th there's a lot of people. Well, first of all, in the bottom left corner, I don't think that it's a small loss. I think that it's a big loss. If you live your whole life believing that you're eventually going to find the woman of your dreams and you're going to have this family, get married, blah, 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 and you end up just getting rejected a thousand times, I think that's going to be crushing for your self-esteem. And, you know, it's like one of your biggest goals in life that is just not materialized because you... Um, you know, you you didn't have the value that you thought you did. So you've wasted a massive amount of time and energy and resources in that scenario. I don't just think it's a small loss. Mm, well, would you agree that people regret the things they didn't do more than the things that they that they do? So it, it, to me, at least from my experience, it hurts more to realize that I could have made it, but I didn't. I didn't go for it, r rather than I I've tried and I failed. I don't know. Like the latter I, I haven't actually. I'll have to think about that one a little bit more after the stream. Um, it seems like quite a big question, and I can't answer it on the spot. But I, what I would say though is that there's going to be a large proportion of guys where they don't actually know the answer to that question. Because if you're on the cusp, like you know, if you're, uh, let's say like a four to like you know a five, like a four to four point nine, then you know. In the BP community, you're considered on the verge, on the cusp of being able to make it or not, being able to ascend and get a relationship because you're not low enough value to the point where you know for a fact and um, it's, it's basically futile to try date women. But you're also not at the point where you know, okay, if I systemize dating in a way where I do this many approaches per week, I'm on all of the apps, I get these photos, then I given enough time, it's guaranteed that I would be able to get the dating life that I want. You, you're not in that position either. So if you're a, somewhere between a 4 to 4.9, it's essentially a gamble. And you don't know if you're ever going to be able to make it or not. So like, it's almost as if you need to add a third column to here where um, it's like you don't know if you make it. So so it's, it's, it's up in the air. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's not binary. It's not either you can make it or you can't make it, because there could be like two, four point five out of tens um, who who live the exact same life, and one of them gets lucky because there's some woman who thinks he's exactly his type. He's oofy doofy maxed. He's ogre maxed, and th the woman like likes this four point five out of ten ogre guy. You know, we've all seen that example in our own lives, um, and and he's able to make it. But then there's, you know, another five guys who are exactly like him who didn't get lucky from that warm approach woman who actually had low standards. And then and then all of those guys are stuffed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, where I, where, I, where I disagree is that I just don't think that the opportunity cost is that big because uh, there's not much else that you would do with your time. I mean, most guys... I don't. I don't know. Maybe you can just this max. I guess art max, what? music max, like business max and stuff instead of approach. Because I, I just don't think that you lose that much. Like you still, the 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 cost isn't really that big, and you also gain social skills in the process. Well, it depends how far down the rabbit hole you go, because it might actually be a small cost if you if if the cost is just getting rejected a thousand times. Like there's some guys who have even wrote to me and say say that they've given up after approaching a thousand women because it didn't work. And and if you get to that point where you've approached a thousand women and it's not worked, then I would say you've done a large enough sample size. You, sh you might as well just give up at that point. Like you know, find some other paths to uh, happiness. However, you're ignoring the percentage of people that think they've got success because they've like gotten married, say. But then they end up getting screwed down later down the line. So, you know, it's like that other guy um, in this community, uh, Rehab Room, says that, like, you can try to bury the BP, but it's always going to come back and bite you later on down the line. So if you're a guy who, say, thinks he 
has succeeded with a woman and you know he's actually found one of the good ones and then he goes into a marriage with her but then like the bb comes back to bite him later on because she doesn't actually find him attractive and she was actually using him for money all of this time and he's nowhere near on the same level as the chads that she's experienced before then he he, he's, he ends up even more screwed than anyone on this chart because if that ends in a divorce then he's gonna um lose half of his money potentially not be able to see his kids and you know you, you get the idea of what i'm talking about oh yeah yeah that that that's a good point and um so it's like just playing devil's advocate the the what the blue pillars would say is that they just don't think it's in women's nature to be that self-interested you know and, and for the same for that reason they would think that the the loss would be a lot smaller okay yeah yeah, I I know what you're talking about. So, you know, it, it depends on like your belief versus reality, really. Um, I think we've explored this slide decent enough. Um, are we all right to move on to the last one? And I'm kind of thinking about like keeping this stream under three hours as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time, but um, I do have some more things to talk about. Can you just let's go to the pes pessimism optimism bars slide? Yeah, this is the last one, by the way. Yeah, this one might be, it might be hard to follow or complicated, but it's about like false positive, false negative, true positive, yeah. and true negative. I I know I I I checked this one before the stream as well because it looked quite confusing, but it's I think it's easier to explain than people might think off of first view. Like the most important part to look at is like these group of guys. No, no, no. Sorry, these group of guys here. Um, and I've seen a lot of these guys, like the amount of um, emails I get from guys that have like got a face rating and then I've found out that they fall into this like 5% of uh, guys who, who th these are guys who are, they're usually younger, they're usually like 18, 19, they've not got that much, that much dating experience and they like write to me, they've clearly watch too many tales videos or other like bp videos in this space and they're like oh you know like tell me if it's over i, I no women like me I, I think i'm gonna have a really hard time i might as well just give up now they they say all of these things and then i look at their photos and i'm like you're actually like you know a five maybe a six i've seen some that are even sevens and i'm like how have you come to this conclusion and some of these guys they've been rejected like three times in their life and then they think, oh, it's over. But they're actually a seven. So this is a problem. And and this is why I recommend to all guys, never, ever, never, ever, ever give up. Never get up. <laughs> never get up. Um, never get up until, <laughs> until you've actually tried to some degree. Like, let's say you approached a, a minimum 50 women. Like, you, you've spoken to at least 50 women in your life you've given it a real stab and that's the actual bare minimum like unless you've done that and you know you can confirm with a face rating i'm not trying to sell my product but i do think i'm quite accurate at rating guys and i can give you your overall smv as well so if you're you know kind of on the verge and you're thinking you're a five out of ten guy um you know you don't know it's truly over until you've actually uh, spoken to enough women and you know, you, you, just to see what your potential is. I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, I understand that. I think that it's it's it is important to stress that not to give up just because of your face rating, right? Don't give up just because you got rated a three. Like you can give up after you approach like a hundred women. Then you you can give up then if you still get nothing. But don't give up just because you think that you you'll never have the potential. Right. Is yeah. that uh, what you agree with? Yeah. Yeah. D don't don't give up. Like even if you get rated a three, you don't know if you're a true three. So if you're a three out of ten guy, you might just be high body fat percentage. And y I'm actually showing one of these guys in the next video that I'm uploading. Um, this guy who's like a three, maybe four. He could actually be a six if he lowered his body fat percentage significantly. So, um, you know, if, if you're one of those guys, don't think oh i'm gonna give up just because i got rated a three look smacks first first that's going to be the most important thing see what your potential is and then try to speak to women 
and then you know like get get some reinforcement from the dating market and if if the market spits you back out and you, you've been rejected after a thousand approaches then fair enough like you know um it, it, you, you might like be better off pursuing something else but 99.9 percent .9 of guys who come to the conclusion that it's over for them i guarantee you they've they've not approached a thousand women let alone they probably not approached 50 women Right, so this leads into um, the topic of how do we create BP content that actually helps men? And I'm, I'm, my my position on this particular one isn't super firm, but I'm going to give you an example that maybe getting more men to look smacks doesn't actually help men because the results are zero sum. And uh, be, be, on top of that, the the types of men who are who are looks maxing. It might be above average guys, uh, average and above average guys, but the sub fives are not looks maxing because looks maxing channels like um, Philippe, I don't know if you know that channel, but yeah, I've heard of him. Um, his community poll, most of his audience is above a five, like sixes and sevens. So it, that just shows that when you put push out looks maxing content on YouTube, like ideally, ideally, like my goal. You know, my, my, my idea would be for it to only be, you know, recommended to the sub fives so we can help help the people who need the help the most. But um, what if that's that's not what actually happens in practice and it just gets average guys to become Chad lights as the sub five guys are left behind? So don't you see how there's a case to be made that helping men look smacks might not actually help men as a whole? Uh, I kind of see what you mean. It might just be like, uh, contributing to the monopoly but I think at the end of the day it's it's an undeniable fact of life that in the dating market as a there's always going to be a proportion of men that are just simply left out that's that's how it's been for all of humanity every woman has reproduced or at least the vast majority and they all had the, op the option to reproduce you know provided they didn't die um, in, in the first like 10 years of their upbringing but for men, it's never been like that. That it was guaranteed that, like the bottom fifty percent of men wouldn't reproduce. So only the top fifty percenters would. And e even if you like look at a lot of the solutions that the BP offers at the moment, as you mentioned, like looks maxing is zero sum because as some guys looks max, they increase their position in the hierarchy. Other guys go down, and then they have less opportunity. Likewise, if some guys geo max, then they are making the dating market worse. Like, you know, take C, for example, um, countries like the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia. Then if you're a guy who is tall from the West, even if you're like a four out of 10 low tier normie, if you go to one of these countries, then in, in, if you date one of the girls there, then you've just taken a woman off the market who would have dated the, the local guy who who's poor. But but now you've you've taken his place. So it's just a fact of life that, you're always going to have the people that get left behind. And some of them, you know, it's unfortunate, such as the guys like in the Philippines who are being replaced uh, by uh, guys who are coming over. But in, in the West, it largely does come down to the guys with the best genetics. Um, and on top of that, the guys who then put in the work and effort to do it like the, and ideally the blue pillars will get left behind so the blue pillars who were waiting for their perfect woman to fall right out of the sky with them putting in no uh work then the, these are ideally going to be the guys to who get left behind but the guys who do look smacks and do put in the work ideally these guys would be the ones to end up succeeding obviously it wouldn't work perfectly like that because there's going to be some three out of ten guys who you know, they can look smacks all they want, but it's not going to make a difference. But as I said, that would be the ideal. Yeah. Um, but it, if, so if it is, uh, if it's zero sum and it's like, if the goal is to actually help men, then why promote something like geomaxing? It's so trying it's, to it's, help it's, them. I mean? It's trying to help the men that, follow your content and believe in what you believe yeah my argument my argument is that that's not a like that's not a good thing thing to do like who cares if it's your subscriber or some other guy that you just need to think about men as a whole and when you're promoting geomaxing you're really not making anything better for men 
Well, it's, it's net neutral in terms of like global happiness, really, then, isn't it? Because you know, I, I, I don't think it's net neutral because, um, because now I think I think it's not immoral. I think it's okay if you are a Western guy and you go to Southeast Asia just to try to find like a traditional woman, a wife to settle down with. If that's what you want, that's fine. But so many geomaxers and these like passport bros, they're fed up with the quality of the woman in the West. They're too like promiscuous and degenerate. And they want to go to Southeast Asia and do the exact same thing, like like contribute, like taking the lion's share of women. They're contributing that exact same problem. That's oh, okay. the very reason they left the West. Just making it worse. It's spreading the issue to, like globally. Oh, this is an interesting argument. So you're saying that they're leaving the West because they're saying that the women are too promiscuous, but then they're bringing these values of promiscuity to these originally traditional countries. Because yeah, a lot so, of the passport are, bros are just going over to, um, you know, just sleep with lots of women, potentially lead them on. You know, some of them might have to fake uh, commitment or fake, like, being a long-term guy with uh, the women. But, you know, a lot of them are just, like, essentially sleeping with them and then never to be seen again. Yeah, that's that. That's what I'm saying. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. It's difficult to police, really, like... You know, it definitely is going to be net negative happiness of the world because if you have, like, one guy who, like, destroys the purity of, like, 20 women in these foreign countries who were previously traditional and would have pre previously married, like, you know, the local traditional guy, it's undeniable to say that that is, like, negative happiness on, on a global scale. But you can't police it. Like, you, you can't control it and you can't stop it from happening. That's just, like, ha how it is. Yeah, you, you can't police it, but if you... Do, do you think that, like, the factoring... Do you think that you should care about, like, the net positive or net negative benefit to humanity, to, to, to like, global happiness in, in the content that you make? So, like, let's say just from my perspective, if I believe that this is making the world a worse place then I'm not going to make videos that would promote this. I don't know. Like, even I, I, think, I think it's like getting into a really deep philosophical um, argument now because it's either, you know, like, I think it's called like the utilitarian point of view where, you know, you think that like the only thing that matters is the greater good and like the global level of happiness versus like the, you know, people can do whatever they want. I forgot what the technical name for um, that mindset is where even, even if like, the net, negative even if the net level of happiness goes down things still might be justified if it increases the overall freedom of decisions that people can make and people being allowed to go to these foreign countries and use their relatively higher smv to sleep with a lot of women that is like increased freedom but it's decreased uh global net happiness it is it is kind of a difficult a difficult topic yeah, it um, is. I don't, I don't have a position on it. Yeah, and n neither do I. And and uh, three, almost three hours of the stream, I don't particularly want to be thinking. Uh, my energy levels are going down, and I don't want to be thinking oh, about okay, some like, deep philosophical um, point. So I'm happy. Oh, to... that's kind of the that's kind of the point of the stream. Okay, well, I mean, I'll I'll try to wrap it up. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll I'll bring up one example. Are you. In your stream, the Manosphere is utter garbage right now. You said that Hamza is a bit too forward when he comes to self-improvement. He doesn't speak about the importance of genetics or looks as much on his channel. And combining that with your Honest Waffles video saying that it's never been easier for men to throw their lives away, what is, I think that it could be justified for him to exaggerate and kind of overblow the benefits of self-improvement because men have never been weaker and have never been lazier. So why not push self-improvement more aggressively than like a realistic mindset? Well, because I'd rather promote a realistic mindset than a delusional one. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but I, I think that uh, when you, uh, in, in terms of like net happiness, Men need all of the hope that they can get. Like the mo in modern times, men are weaker than ever, and they you need to push them to to be as strong as hard as possible, even if it means that you sacrifice some of the realism 
in that message. No, as, as I said earlier, I'd rather point them in a the direction of realism. And I believe that's actually going to be the most beneficial for them long term. Because as I gave in my example of a delusion maxed fitness plan or a realistic fitness plan, people are going to be more likely to stick to the realistic fitness plan if they're told their the expectations is what they're going to get in line is a, in a, is it in a line with reality after they put in the work like they're going to be more likely to stick to it right that's that's an yeah i see where it comes from that's an example of where it it would be better to be realistic but i'll give you one example of when i think it is worth it to lie to help people so let's let's take for example uh an anti binge drinking PSA, like a commercial that says like, don't, don't drink alcohol. If, if that's based on a study, let's say hypothetically that 20% of the study's participants get some kind of disease if they binge drink it. If, if you say that in the ad, like, are people really going to change their behavior? Are people really going to listen? No, but if you, not much, but if you leave out the 20% part and just say, Hey, this is what will happen to you if you binge drink that you're you're leaving that out so it's it, you're kind of kind of lying but that will have a much better impact on public health do you think uh yes it it would i i kind of get what you're talking about but i don't really want to get into the like ins and outs of it like you know because i guess that's why on smoking packets or well, at least in the uk they do i don't know if they do this in other countries but they show pictures of like lungs that have uh like all diseased from smoking cigarettes and stuff and i guess that is kind of um you know, em emotional play and it's trying to, you know, it it's not like data driven and like saying like, oh, if you smoke, there's a 50% increased chance that you get lung cancer, blah, 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 blah. It's not going a data driven route, but yeah, I, 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 I'm too tired really to get into the ins and outs of this discussion. So yeah, well, well, that's just, I'll try to wrap it up now. It's like, that's just why I think that the messages of guys like Hamza and these self-improvement YouTubers is good because for example, Hamza says that you know, your your like reproductive organ isn't is, is going to stop working if you eat too much McDonald's. You know, and I, I think like, dude, there's so many guys who it just works just fine, even though they eat a bunch of fast food, right? But him kind of exaggerating the negative health effect, that's what gets people to actually be healthier and stop eating fast food. And like, I can't, I might disagree that that's that's true, but I think that the overall effect is a good thing. It's a good thing that he's making those videos even though okay. they may not be true. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's just like another similar example to the same overarching topic. Um, it's an interesting one to think about and end the stream on. Yeah, so uh, is there anything else that you, you want to say? Um, I think, yeah, we've pretty much covered everything. I think this has definitely been one of the best streams that we've had on this channel so far. So uh, it was uh, definitely a good idea getting you on. So thanks so much for being a guest today. Oh, do you, do you just want to end it now or do you want to like, because uh, I just have like one more thing, but it, it yeah, might take ahead. a while. So I don't know. If I don't know. Okay. If it's, it's going to take a while, like, then maybe leave it for the next one. Cause, uh... Uh, all right, then uh, if you want to stop it here, then um, that's, that's that. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for tuning in everyone guys. Uh, we'll see you in the yeah. next one. Um, see ya. Yeah, th thank you so much for having me on. We, yeah, bye. All right. I've just ended it, the stream now.